afternoon and welcome to O'Kelly Riddick Stadium here in Durham, North Carolina for this afternoon's MEAC Digital Network broadcast on ESPN3 featuring the Eagles of North Carolina Central University and the Hornets of Delaware State. Hello everyone, I am Jonathan Duran. I'll be joined later in this broadcast by Joshua Stevenson as the Eagles will get ready to take on the Hornets in what's sure to be a blockbuster game here in the nest that they call it here on the great campus of North Carolina Central University. The Eagles and the Hornets meet today after the Hornets stopped a long streak that North Carolina Central had against the Hornets last year. They had won four in a row. Actually, skip that. They had won five in a row, the Eagles had, until last year when the Hornets defeated North Carolina Central 28 to 13 in Dover. But now North Carolina Central, they're here trying to defend another streak as they are 5-0 against Delaware State here in Durham, North Carolina. And matter of fact, the Hornets have not beaten North Carolina Central here in O'Kelly Riddick Stadium since 1977. The Eagles will put that streak on the line. The Hornets looking to build a streak as they look to go 2-0 against North Carolina Central. And we'll have that game for you next right here on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. we got a great game for you coming up, and we'll have it for you right after these messages on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. instills high value workplace skills and provides opportunities for leadership for more than a century Good afternoon. Welcome to O'Kelly Riddick Stadium as North Carolina Central University gets ready to take on the Hornets of Delaware State on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. Got a great game getting ready to come up for you as Adrian Olivo gets ready to send this one airborne. And this game is underway from the Bull City. It'll be a short kick, and the up man from Delaware State will pick it up, and he'll be brought down at about the 33-yard line. And that's where the Hornets are going to begin today's game. Jonathan Duran here inside the press box at O'Kelly Riddick Stadium. And I'll be joined in this broadcast by Joshua Stevenson as the Eagles kicked off to start this game. And the Hornets will have the ball first as we get started. They'll be going from right to left, as you see. And Delaware State will send out this offensive unit. Savion Hopes, Matthew Dirks, Dwight Chavis, Eric Kareem, and a preseason first-team all meat guy, Caden Crawford, will anchor the right side of the line. Tyleek Pathea, one of the two quarterbacks, freshman quarterbacks for Delaware State, will be the signal caller, and he'll have Bryant Dallas on his right sand as Pathea will hand this one off. And that's how Delaware State is going to start this game. They're going to try to get this ball going on the ground. Absolutely. And talking about things getting done on the ground, North Carolina Central, they're going to be doing their best to stop it. Up at the front, number 43, Darius Royster on your screen right now. He's a senior from Chesapeake, Virginia. He is one of the best defenders in the league. 48 tackles this year. 30 solos. He has 10 and a half tackles for loss, five and a half sacks. He was recognized as Phil Steele's preseason defensive player of the year in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. He'll be looking to wreak some havoc today as the Hornets continue to go to the ground game. They'll go right up the middle this time around. They'll gain a few yards. And it'll be third and mid to go now for Delaware State. And a simple thing is, like, it's either two options. You can either have to run to set up the pass or vice versa. So I at least to see that the Hornets are looking to set up the run in order to throw up those passing lanes. Now, the Delaware State, these first two plays, they've been run plays. They do have a potent receiving game. Trey Gross, Angelo Gonzalez, and Quan Akali, he's going to be one of the big guys to look out for, the big number 80. 30 catches this year for 402 yards and four touchdowns. They'll spread them out here, and here's Bethea backing up. The pressure's coming in, and he'll release it on the screen. Gets it into the backup receiver, Thomas Bertrand Houdon. The redshirt freshman from Mont saint hilaire in Quebec, but not enough for the first down. Absolutely. So North Carolina Central and the line anchored by Darius Royster. They get the job done, and Delaware State will bring out the punt unit. North Carolina Central is going to get their first opportunity to make something happen in today's game. 
Back to return is Brandon Codrington. He's been showing some flashes as a returner this year. He's got a lot of speed. The one thing is just waiting for him to make the big one happen. So Codrington is back to return, and Jose Romo Martinez to punt for Delaware State, and that's a name that you're going to hear a couple of times. That surname at the very least is Codrington brings this one in inside the 20, shakes past a couple, and finally he's going to be brought down by the turf at the 25-yard line. It looked like he would have been able to stay on his feet. He could have gone a, a little bit further. Absolutely. That's all you need in this situation is a little bit of daylight for you to break through and score six on the board. Just a little bit of daylight. He wasn't able to find it as the Hornets close it quickly. And they're going to try to do that again on defense. They'll flip it over. And the Delaware State defense, we look to the defensive end for North Carolina Central. And you see number 48 for Delaware State, Brandon Carswell, the senior from Mount Vernon, Georgia. 26 tackles. Darius Royster has 10 and a half tackles for a loss. Carswell, team high with 10 tackles for a loss. Three and a half sacks. And not only that, he has two blocked kicks this year. At quarterback for North Carolina Central is Davius Richard. He fires it quickly on the screen to the near side. It's caught by Tyler Barnes, and North Carolina Central plays pitch and catch on first down for a few yards. Yeah, and absolutely. And Davis Richard is one of those dual-threat quarterbacks who can extend plays with his leg. He can also throw the ball reach down in order to set up plays for his wide receivers. In the backfield is Isaiah Totten. He's been a guy that's gotten a lot of accolades during his career. Hasn't quite gotten off the mark so far this season. He has 112 carries for 481 yards. He is the team's leading rusher, and he does have one touchdown this year as the Eagles continue in their shotgun pack. It's just a handoff for Totten, and Totten trying to carry the defender like a backpack. It's not going to get much further. But he comes third down. Front line for North Carolina Central has a couple of preseason all MEAC guys. Ricky Lee, the left tackle, and Andrew Dale, the right guard. Robert Mitchell from Millsboro, Delaware, will be in the middle. Jesse Urbina, the left guard, and Devin McDaniel and Tyler Barnes, the three receivers for the Eagles. And Zach Kellum will get the start at tight end today for the Maroon and Gray. So go to a four receiver spread. And Davius Richard puts his hands together, looking upfield, swings it over the middle. That is bobbled and drops. Looks like that was intended for Deshaun Stevens. But the Eagles will turn it over. Excuse me, that's uh, Quentin Chaplin, number 12. But incomplete, fourth down. Yeah, absolutely. Unfortunately, the Eagles could not make that third down conversion. Those are the type of plays that you're going to need in order to keep the drive going. Defense has been the thing that we've been highlighting on. And so far, both defenses... Get the job done, a punch and a counter punch. And getting ready to return now for Delaware State. Will be number 19. He's not on the depth chart to return, but he'll take this punt. It'll bounce in front of him. A couple of skips. Picks it up now, trying to head around towards the sideline. And he'll be pushed out of bounds. Not much of a gain there. And a flag thrown towards the tail end of the play. And another flag as well. A lot of action happening on the Eagle sideline. Looks like they're getting out of it over there on the sideline. So I think it's maybe either maybe. Look down towards midfield. Official standing at the 40 yard line. And here's the call from the White Hat. During the return, the legal block in the back, return team number 28. With 10 yards, first down, timeout. So they'll send us to a media timeout. We've played four minutes, and there's no score. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. Monaco. That's how steak is done. Longhorn Steakhouse. You can't fake steak. Welcome back to O'Kelly Reddick Stadium, North Carolina Central University, hoping hosting Delaware State 
on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. Glad to have you with us this afternoon. The Hornets on the ball for the second time today, and they'll go back to the run game. Their third run today, three runs and one pass. No first downs yet for Delaware State, Dallas, but they'll the pick up about barrier. four yards on that carry with Bryce Down. Excuse me, with Bryant Dallas. Pick up Delaware State three. going to huddle up here second in the white seven. jerseys. He's trying to stop this long losing streak here in North Carolina. It's been since 1977 that the Hornets have been able to claim a victory here in the Bull City as they go to a single back set. First time that we've seen either team go under center today. And Bryant Dallas trying to turn on the Jets. He's around the corner. That's to the sticks. Enough for a first down. You made an excellent decision by running towards the sideline scope. So if you're a tackler, you don't get that right angle on that tackle. He is going to the six. Where so Bryant Dallas back. picks up the Delaware first State. first down today for Delaware State. And the Hornets are going to look to try to build on that. So far in this game, picked up just over 10 yards here. Gone up to about 15, waiting for the live stats to update. Up to 17 yards now on five plays. I got to go on the screen here to the near side. And there's some room there for Dallas. Steps out of one tackle. He's going to try to push the tackler over to the sticks. He might have enough for a first down. It'll be one on the ground and one the through the air for Brian pass. Dallas. Absolutely. And Hornets are showing you now that they can hit you with Dallas. multiple ways as far as the offense to go with the screens the and definitely with their run game as well. Bryant Dallas showing up as the go-to guy right now for Delaware State. And they're going to take their time as they go back into the huddle here. They know their rhythm. They want to stick to that rhythm. You see in college football nowadays, everybody wants to go to the hurry up. North Carolina Central, one of those teams that loves to go hurry up. And Delaware State is going to walk this at their own pace. They go back to Bryant Dallas. And you know what? Bryant Dallas, that's a man that can carry the load. The senior from Marietta, Georgia, he's 5'8", 200. And they're going to be looking to him to do some heavy lifting today. Absolutely. I see about one of the last nine games nine. coming into it. Yeah, four two. touchdowns already. And eight. Four scores for him. Has five catches out of the backfield to, for 25 yards. He does have one reception today for 11 yards. You look at the production, it's Bryant Dallas. Four carries for 17 yards, one catch for 11 yards. Bertrand Houdon has another reception for no yards. Tyleek Bethea has two, cat, has two passes, both completed for 11 yards to Bryant Dallas. And now they go play action away from Dallas. A pass too high for the tight end. There was an eagle defensive back waiting, trying to pick it up. And it falls harmly incomplete. incomplete. Absolutely. He was almost there. I bet he wish he could get that one back in order to get the interception to swing the momentum back on the eagle side. But I guess uh, maybe next time. So now third and eight for Delaware State. Going very slowly here. They're across midfield for the first time today. And they'll spread everybody out. Go to a five-wide set now. Eagles put down three defensive linemen with one look and a rush. And Bethea in the pocket, taking his time, has a lot of time there. Throws a parabola over the middle a little bit too far. Intended for Angelo Gonzalez, incomplete. incomplete. And that could have been a very big gainer. That could have been the first six points on the board for DSU. Yeah, and that's the one thing about those quarterbacks with those rocket arms. Sometimes you can sometimes overthrow your receiver. Sometimes just a little bit too much power on that one. And a correction that was intended for Trey Gross, the junior, six foot four from Annapolis, Maryland. And he'll head off to the sideline and sit down on the bench and get a breather after running what well, turned out to be a very good seam route. Just the pass a little bit too far ahead of him. So Jose Romo Martinez, a preseason second team All Miac punter. And Movement at the line before the snap. Now it's like we might have to do this one more time. It looks like a signal for a false start. Front to the snap, false start, offense to 36. Five yard penalty, still fourth down. For the game clock operator, reset the game clock, 8.36. So false start against Delaware State will back them up five yards. And that gives Brandon Cotterington a little bit more room to maneuver with. Jose Romo Martinez ready to punt. His brother has been on the sidelines today. Number nine, Fidel Romo Martinez. Also a preseason second team all-MEAC guy as a kicker, place kicker, 
Delaware State hoping to roll him out a few times today. This punt's going to bounce inside the five-yard line, and it looks like it might be downed before it gets to the in line. And it looks like they will spot him down at the one-yard line. That's where North Carolina Central will start. So North Carolina Central will have 99 yards to go when we get back from the break. No score here in the first quarter. You're listening to MEAC Football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. Always popular Flo's Filet and the limited time 14-ounce Delmonico. That's how steak is done. Longhorn Steakhouse. You can't fake steak. This is MEAC Football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. A beautiful Saturday afternoon here in the Bull City. North Carolina State Fair has been going on over these last week and a half and the State Fair motto here is nothing could be finer and I got to tell you nothing really could be finer than college football on a Saturday afternoon Joshua yeah uh, yeah absolutely now those two best things now you can have the best of both worlds you can have enough time to watch the game and still yeah go out time to go check the fair too but uh I like this game too that's Joshua Stevenson I'm Jonathan Duran we're alive here from Durham North Carolina on the campus of North Carolina Central University, North Carolina Central and Delaware State meeting here at O'Kelly Reddick Stadium. The Eagles trying to get back on track. They started off pretty well within the MEAC. They picked up a win in their opening game at Morgan State. They won that game 27 to 17 after that. It was a close loss at Florida A&M and then a tough luck loss against Bethune-Cookman last week or their, their last time out here in Durham. And now North Carolina Central trying to return to their winning ways. Well, actually, both teams are trying to get back to their winning ways. They're coming both into this game with losing columns. And a quick pass from Davius Richard complete to Ryan McDaniel. The Eagles Very buy themselves fast. about one yard as they move Please. away from midfield. Excuse me, rather away from the goal line. Trying to work their way towards midfield. Pick up a three, second and seven. From the so three yards picked up there, second and seven. Davius Richard, he's not afraid of the quick pass. Not afraid to pass at all. There's been times this year when he's spread the ball around to 11 different receivers. And, of course, head coach Trey Oliver is going to be hoping that he'll be able to do the same thing today. He backed up still in his own goal line as he receives the snap. It'll be a design draw for him. Tuck the ball down, try to stiff arm a defender, but the Hornets swarming him down. Not much there. It's third down. Well, anything's better than being Richard, on one uh, at your one yard line. So, this is the reason why uh, Davis Richard in the game that against Florida A&M down. was their leading rusher with 40 yards in that line. game. So he can put the ball down the field and run for get an extra couple of yards. And Davis Richard, he's not only the leading rusher third, for this team. As you three. take another look at Richard trying to move his way up on that design draw, you look at Delaware State, just eyes on the quarterback. Everybody to the spot. Richard, 33 carries, 204 yards, and three touchdowns this year. Had that big 64-yard run against Morgan State that helped North Carolina Central get off the mark. And Richard brings the ball down, rolling, looking to pass, and that is incomplete. It looked like he was looking for McDaniel as he was releasing on the out route. But Delaware State, they hold firm, and they don't let North Carolina Central move. They picked up those three yards on first down, nothing else. Yeah, well, every defense, they want to get the big play, the big interception. But the next best thing is to rush their quarterback and make him throw an inaccurate pass. So Delaware State gets ready to return this punt. Picaro. John Picaro will punt deep inside his own end zone, standing on the C in NCCU. Pressure comes in. He gets the punt off. It's not his best. They return here from the 42-yard line up the middle, and he steps out of a couple of tackers up to about the 32-yard line. And Delaware State in their best starting position here today. Ready on the return. So Delaware State, they're in the best position looking to pick up their first score of the game and try to open this game up. Yeah, absolutely. And both teams are trying to look, look for that big play, but no team seems to actually have enough momentum to keep the drive going. 6.50 to go here in the first quarter. Delaware State right now have gained a total of 30 yards. North Carolina Central, a total of 10. Just 15 total plays in this game, a combined 40 yards. Delaware State looking to add a few more. They're going to go and run the option here. Bethea is going to slide down. Smart move there. He picks up eight. 
Absolutely. And then think about those running quarterbacks. If you try to pressure upon you, better make sure you get to him because he will use that speed to get those extra yards. And a look at Bethea here running the option. They fake the second give. And he found himself in wide open space as he line. runs that one up. Second down and five. Delaware State again moving along at their preferred pace. Nice and easy. And they'll go to a three receiver set here. Opened up to the near side. Fake on the handoff. Bethea. Pressure's coming in. He'll take it and run, but not before he's taken down. Tripped up from behind. And North Carolina Central getting it done. Darius Royster, he was one of our guys to check on. He was in there for that tackle. And that's the good thing about being on defense. You have to learn to never give up. He was caught up with the blocker and still managed to shed the tackler in order to grab up on Bethea. Darius Royster is a definite never give up kind of guy. He started his career at Norfolk State and he tried to be there as a walk on. Got released there. Decided that he wanted to transfer. Ended up here at North Carolina Central and all of a sudden Set the school record for tackles for a loss during last year's MEAC. Four receivers for DSU. And Bethea looking towards the out route. That's caught. That's enough for the first down. DSU moving Bethea forward inside the red zone. See, fires that one complete. Excuse me. They kind of say it's incomplete intended for Karan Alain. Oh, it looked good, but you can actually see oh, if we can get a replay coming up soon. But about that one. But the ball hit the the ball was hit on the ground before he actually caught it before he got the glass on. So another look at this pass intended for Karan Alain. Right there. And it looks like he will be incomplete. Alain, the younger brother of Bryson Alain who ran amok in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference as a Hornet running back. And here's a kick from Jose Romo Martinez. And he the drills this good. one from about 35 yards out. So Delaware State hits the board first. And that'll send us to a media timeout. This is MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network. Out of the first quarter. Longhorn Steakhouse. You can't fake steak. Welcome back to O'Kelly Reddick Stadium here in Durham, North Carolina. North Carolina Central hosting Maryland, excuse me, Delaware State. And Delaware State onto the board first. They lead this game three to nothing. A 45-yard field goal from Jose Romo Martinez caps off the drive. Delaware State, they go down the field. In four plays, they gain five yards. Six minutes, 50 seconds. And drive brought to you by North Carolina Eye, Ear, Nose, and Throat. Visit them online at nceent.com. As Cotterington looks to return this one, has to take two chances to pick it up. And he'll be cut down at the 10-yard line. Not his best effort right there. Oh, man, that's, that's twice on both, on both receiving those, those kicks that they started less than eight yards at their own drive. So... Not a very, very good start on offense. Brandon Potterington saw the kick coming in. He dropped it the first time, went to pick it up the second time, and couldn't get it cleanly. And now North Carolina Central will start at their own 11-yard line. Delaware State leading 3 to nothing. Jose Romo Martinez hits a 45-yard field goal to put the Hornets ahead, and now it's up to North Carolina Central to respond. So take a look over at the Chancellor's box. Uh, the Dignitary is enjoying this afternoon game. A handoff in the backfield, and Delaware State not fooled as they stop this one for a minimal gain. Oh, man. And uh, Tottenham is Titan. getting up a little slow a little bit. Hopefully he's not a little banged up in that last play. So Isaiah Totten doesn't get much going there, and no it's been the story the so far this year. They've been waiting for him to jump off, and actually in the backfield it's Jordan Freeman. A redshirt junior from Charlotte, North Carolina, the Queen City native. Freeman able to get into the end zone against Morgan State as well. 47 carries for 282 yards and that one score. They go back to Freeman. And Freeman stopped by the edge. Rushers there. Jordan Freeman. And it's third down now. Delaware State just collapsed that right side of the line. Christian Johnson, the senior, wearing the number 94 leading the way. Pick up a one. Third and nine. Third and nine now for North Carolina Central. And they've got some yardage to go. They've been locked up inside their own 20-yard line for the second time today. Davius Richard waits on the snap. 
And the Eagles going to the extended count. Richard has options. He slings it over the middle. It's incomplete. Had Trevion on Pratt right there. He had to stop his momentum, but it hits him in the hands. Yeah, and, and, and well, there's Pratt. no excuse on one of those type of plays. As long as the ball hits your hands, you always have an opportunity to catch it. Unfortunately, he couldn't get it on that play. So North Carolina Central, they're going to go three and out again. Back-to-back -back drives, they've gone three and out. And the first time, that's applied Delaware State with three points. They lead to three to nothing here. Well, if you keep playing the game of down and outs, then you're going to be playing another game of catch-up. So and that's the game that you don't want to be in. John Picaro back to punt once again for North Carolina Central. Sends this one airborne. Got a nice spiral on it. It'll be brought in inside the 50-yard line. Is back oh, up, and the Eagles are back on top of it at midfield. That's all you need is one of those type of places. Swing the momentum right back in your team's favor. So Brandon Codrington, he had an issue bringing the ball in. And now it looks like North Carolina Central might be on it. First down. And another look at it here. Just a tough break trying to bring it in. And Medi try to get his hands on it. And North Carolina Central is going to recover this one. And he'll send it back in their direction. So a big, as you said, a big swing of momentum for North Carolina Central. Let's see if they'll be able to ride the wave and get into the end zone. Yeah, absolutely. You have to capitalize on these events because they certainly do not come often. On the recovery, Miles Cook, the freshman from Willingboro, New Jersey. And now North Carolina Central with fresh life at the 48-yard line, still on their own side of the field. Davis Richard turns. He'll give it to Freeman, but he'll go play action. Richard throws on the move. And that pass is going to be intercepted, but out of bounds. But my goodness, what a grab there on the sideline. Oh, if we had wider sidelines, I think he would have been going there and scoring a touchdown after that catch. But Second unbelievable down. athleticism to even grab it even out of bounds. So what you're saying, they need to send Jawain Granger to the CFL, huh? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Richard Salford from Newcastle, Delaware. He has eight pass breakups this year. Go back and hand it off to Freeman. And Freeman again, slow to rise to his feet. He mentioned that earlier. And he's going to head off here. And I've got to bring in the spell running back, Mookie Collier. He'll be next up. Jordan Freeman, his first carry, a little slow to get up. Try to stay out there and soldier on, but it looks like it might have just caught up to him. Hope that he's all right. Mookie Collier, the new tailback in the backfield for North Carolina Central. And as Richard steps up in the pocket, steps yeah, past the defender, has a blocker in oh. front of him, has to win down the sideline, and finally be tripped up inside the 35-yard line. The flag's thrown in the backfield, and a lot of times you see him thrown there. A lot of times that's a hold. Yeah, and hopefully you don't want to have that big play go to waste. So we'll see what the officials have to say. Now talk to each other. Davius Richard. Over the course of this season, if you've seen any highlights of him, you know that he's really, really strong. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the uh, freshman quarterback from uh, Bell Glade, Florida. By 75, just the climb. Hold it. By 79, we're being forced. 10-yard penalty. Repeat third down. Ooh. Yeah, from Bell Glade, Florida. Um, Co-Wookie the for the MEAC in one game against Elizabeth City State. Line. With 17 for 24, so he can surely do it with the arm as well as with his legs too as well. Two holding plays on that last play from North Carolina Central. Third. Two holding penalties, rather. Devin Jordan and Samadana Okazie OKK call for the infractions. So now it becomes third and 20 for North Carolina Central. Pressure's coming as Delaware State brings the blitz. Richard throws his one in a leaping grab from Deshaun Stevens. And that should be Richard enough for a first down. Third and 20, not a problem for North Carolina Central. Deshaun Stevens using those bungees underneath them cleats, able to snag the ball over the defender in an amazing grab. Deshaun Stevens, his teammates affectionately call him Day-Day. Richard <laughs> Jr. playing in his hometown of Durham, North Carolina. One of the transfers on this team for North Carolina since you see him leap up and high point that ball. Absolutely. In your face. Now, using a little bit that more athleticism. Say after that. He's transferred in from North Carolina State. He's made an impact on this team during his time. Stavius Richard turns and looks at the sideline. This team has been pretty good at bringing in the North Carolina native. Stavius Richard from Florida, though. But he passes this one up to about the 30-yard line. Another pitch and catch this time. Complete. 
to EJ Hicks from Rollsville, North Carolina. Yeah, to use a needle threader on that one. There's a tight Complete window between those two defenders, able to Hicks. throw the ball tight enough for him to snag the ball. Freshman quarterbacks, a lot of times people will say, oh, this guy, he's gun shy, or he's got happy feet. He's ready to run whenever. Davis Richard, he's ready to throw the ball in any situation, but he doesn't have to throw it here. He gives it to Mookie Collier, and Collier's going to push North Carolina Central ahead for as They lean the sticks. That's a first down for the home team. And defenses are always looking to manipulate the offense into thinking that something that really isn't there, that type of stuff can disrupt a young quarterback. That's okay. Another look at Collier, that jump cut in the backfield, explosive. They'll go back to Collier here. He'll push the pile forward. He'll get a couple of yards. Second down now. But Mookie Collier, he's had his name called quite a lot this year. 35 carries for him. Head coach Trey Oliver during the offseason said, we've got a stable of running backs on scholarship. We're going to use them. And they've stuck to that. They've got three running backs they've been able to rotate through. They've got Totten, Freeman, and Collier. All three of them have played. Where's Hill still in the first quarter? Well, you got to learn we have able to re use the resources. Oh, we got some uh, attention over there on the line. No. Movement there. That's going to go against Robert Mitchell, the junior. He's also from... Millsboro, Delaware. The head coach, Trey line. Oliver, I to call those self-inflicted negatives. Well, you know second. what that and shortens 14. up to when you make it into an acronym? Uh, I believe you're going to tell me, though. Those are sins. So what things that you just don't want to commit. And, of course, are the things that hurt you as a team. You move backwards in North Carolina Central, trying to get organized here. Under five seconds to snap the ball. And... They'll turn around and go back to the tailback Collier. And the Hornets are ready again. The Hornets are not playing defensively when it comes to the run game. They have been at it all game and long so far. That will do it That's for the, the end of the first, first quarter. Delaware State, a 45-yard field goal from Delaware Jose Romo Martinez is the difference so far. They're up 3 to nothing. Second quarter is next. You're watching MEAC Football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. Now Delmonico, that's how steak is done. Longhorn Steakhouse, you can't fake steak. Three, two, one. Welcome back to O'Kelly Riddick Stadium. North Carolina Central University and Delaware State meeting here. First quarter in the books, 15 more minutes on the clock. The Hornets third leading three to nothing. The North Carolina Central with the football right now, facing third and 14 in Hornet territory. Davius Richard trying to... Turn the tables here for North Carolina Central and send the Eagles ahead here at home. The first game after the bye week dumps it out on the flat to Ryan McDaniel. He's tripped up before he can get to the sticks, but North Carolina Central is in Richard field goal range. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good play to set up to get you further down in the red zone. Uh, those drag routes Ryan really help the shooters break away from the, from the defenders in order, in order to get Ball that first down. That's Joshua Stephenson. I'm Jonathan Duran. This is MEAC football down. on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. As North Carolina Central looks to tie this game up, It'll be about a 39-yard field goal from Adrian Olivo, trying to knock it down for the right hash mark. Sends it up. It's a line drive kick. Doesn't have enough. It does, and it's through the pipes, and North Carolina Central ties this game up. And that's three. I had a little bit of a, uh, a bottle snap, you know, but he still managed to have enough uh, concentration in order to get the field goal off. Uh, NCCU playing is smart so far. I wish they would have went full for the red zone, honestly, to swing the momentum back in their favor, but uh, you might as well just get as best you think you can as a field goal. Well, North Carolina Central, they've been one of the more aggressive red zone teams. North Carolina Central so far, 15 for 21 in the red zone. Eight touchdowns scored in the red zone. They're eight for 21. But you get in the red zone, you take the points, they tie it up, and it goes into the books as a 39-yard field goal from Adrian Olivo. And we'll take a look back at that last drive. It goes nine plays, 30 yards, four minutes, and a 13 seconds. A closer look at that drive brought to you by North Carolina. Eye, uh, ear, nose, and throat. And See, that field goal has brought some life to the Screaming Eagles here at Oak Hill Reddick Stadium. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I know the fans are wanting for that aerial attack, that high-scoring game, but sometimes games comes as a chess match sometimes. 
Uh, North Carolina Central on to the board. We're tied up three apiece as Adrian Olivo gets ready to send this skyward back to Delaware State. A second time to return today. It'll bounce and be brought in inside the 10-yard line. Looking for a seam, but stiffed at the 20-yard line. North Carolina Central stops the returner, Karana Lane. Oh, maybe see if he went the other way. Maybe he would have had a little a bit lane. more of a lane to go to. On the return. Kind of sort of ran into his own defender. So you're saying it could have been a lane for a lane? Well, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <Delaware> <laughs> So Delaware State onto the ball for the first time here in the second quarter. A very low gaining first quarter for both teams. Delaware State 12 plays for 35 yards on offense. North Carolina Central 16 plays for 47 yards on offense. Delaware State, they're out there. They'll start this with a two-back set, something that you don't see too often in the game now. And they'll hand it off to the tailback. He'll burrow his way through the line and not get much there. Eagle front three, working very hard. I say a front three, they do say they work with a front four, but a lot of times you'll look down Richard there. Harris, there's two down the linemen. Carrier. Sometimes there's only one down lineman for North Carolina Central. Up a one. Second and nine. Second and nine now for the Hornets. And their white jerseys with the cherry red pants and the red helmets with that state script logo on there. What do you think of those script helmets? Uh, they remind me of, uh, you know, the UNV uh, running Rebels, uh, that little color scheme too, as well. The classic UNLV with the art script on there as the Hornets staying in the shotgun. They'll go back on the ground out of the first tackle, but not much more there for the tailback as they go to Richard Harris. He's number two on the depth chart, the retro Harris, junior from Long Island, carrier. New York. 58 carries for 321 A yards and one, one score this year. Third All three of the main tailbacks for Number DSU 24. have gotten into the end zone. The only tailback that hasn't scored is Bertrand Houdon, who we saw earlier today catch that first pass from Talik Bethea. And all of them have the athleticism to make their own play, so uh, it looks likely they, they, they may get one today. Bethea back to pass. It'll just be his sixth attempt of the day, and he completes it to Trey Gross at the 40-yard line. Loses the football. It's bouncing around on the field, and the Eagles look like they might have gotten it back. Oh my How God. about that? Delaware State, for the second time when they've reached that Eagle logo, something about it, they just lost the football. Well, he had it, and then ran with it for a little bit, and then for some reason lost concentration on the ball and just forgot about it. Uh, Got to learn how to hold on to the pigskin. Another look at this run from Bethea. And running up the field, he's just holding on to the ball a little bit too loosely. And a great hit from North Carolina Central. They forced the ball out. And this is a team that has led the league and read, led the nation Eagles in takeaways this year. From the 41 yard line. So the Eagles force a second fumble from Delaware State. Their second takeaway today after that muffed punt from Medi. And now the Eagles on Delaware State's 41-yard line. Trying to go in front of this game. Play action for Richard. Looking to roll. Has green space. Slings it on a dime. Caught by Stevenson. And he'll put it down at the 25-yard line. Deshaun Stevens pushes the Eagles to the 25. See, and everybody likes to criticize a scrambling quarterback prototype of not being able to stay in the pocket. But sometimes you have to extend plays with your legs in order to get a playoff. Eagles going hurry up. Another handoff here for the tailback. And he'll go into a crush of white shirts. He'll get about three. And now we're seeing the dichotomy of these two teams. Delaware State, they like to go slowly in the huddle. North Carolina Central, as soon as that ball is spotted, they're ready to snap. We'll put in the defense on his heels. It's also a great attribute as well, too. So got to learn how to utilize that as well. 23-yard line. Eagles looking for their second trip into the red zone today. Pump fake on the pass, and it's complete to the outside, caught by Tyler Barnes. And North Carolina Central should get enough Barnes. for the first down. They're up to the 15. Two straight uh, completions for Davius Richard, uh, showing off the arm in the various ways. And actually, they're going to mark this short. It's third in inches for North Carolina Central. Just on the opposite side of the 15. Third down and less than one yard to go. So now walking the line is the quarterback for North Carolina Central, Davius Richard. Changes the play up, gets everybody on the same page, and a handoff in the backfield. One cut, and he's up the middle and inside the five-yard line, Isaiah Totten. 
and that's something that Isaiah Todd possesses. He's got great lateral movement, and North Carolina Central going back into the hurry up here. Showed off a series of moves, was one defender away from scoring. Another handoff for Todd, and another quick step in the backfield. Has some space, he gets to the goal line, and that is a touchdown for North Carolina Central. Isaiah Totten, the preseason first team all MEAC guy, carries North Carolina Central in front. Press the turbo button on that one. After that one broken tackle, use that speed right here. You see, bam, get off me. Keeps going. And using that versus speed to get the touchdown in. Uh, Central's up by six. Isaiah Totten, he was a Cougar when he was in high school. Went to Apex, a local school here in the area, in the triangle. And now North Carolina Central up by six as they wait on the extra point. And Adrian Olivo will go forward, and he'll tack it on. North Carolina Central leads this game now 10-3 after Isaiah Totten carries North Carolina Central into the end zone. That last drive. It goes five plays, 41 yards, one minute and 46 seconds. The scoring play, a five-yard carry by Isaiah Totten. A closer look at the drive brought to you by North Carolina. Eye, ear, nose, and throat. We're heading to break. This is EAC Football on the MEAC Digital Network. And ESPN3. Filet and the limited time 14-ounce Delmonico. That's how steak is done. Longhorn Steakhouse. You can't. MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. We've got a great one for you here from the Bull City of Durham, North Carolina. Alongside myself is Joshua Stephenson. I'm Jonathan Duran as North Carolina Central plays host to the Hornets of Delaware State. Eagles now leading this game 10-3 as Adrian Olivo sends it off to the Hornets to return. They'll start from their own 11-yard line. It's Medi once again. He has an open gap. It's just the kicker to beat. Meets him and beats him to the outside. Across the 30-yard line and finally brought down. Brandon Cotterington saves the day for North Carolina Central. That's Kareem Medi. It's all about moving in between defenders, finding that lane that can get you to a long stride just like that. He only had one defender to beat. Uh, got tripped up from behind, unfortunately, but he almost got that touchdown. Another look at this return from Karana Lane. He picked his spot and made it a very confident decision. And here's the chase down from Brandon Cotterington. He's on the kick return team usually, but he gets the job done as a gunner, saving six points for North Carolina Central. That's pretty good there. Did not give up. Could have very easily just let the, the defender go, but decided that uh, his best interest to stop that guy. So the Hornets will go to a single back, two receiver set, and getting anywhere, getting nowhere, heading outside into the backfield, stopping that play for North Dallas, Carolina Dallas. Central. Miles Turner. Tackle. Shed it both those tackles and Miles managed Turman. to wrap up the ball carrier. Excellent job defensively. Miles Terman, the defensive tackle, you see him there in the, the middle of the field, just slips through, line. and he was Where not going to be deterred by the tailback for DSU, Bryant Dallas. A loss of four yards on that play, second down now. Bethea calls for the snap, and he'll go and swing this one on the vertical route. That's going to be caught inside the 10-yard line, spinning out of the tackle, reaching it across the, tie, the pylon, and a touchdown for Delaware State. Bethea and they're one extra point away from tying this game up again. Hornets bounce back. Brilliant throw by Bethea. For the Excellent route running by the receiver. Did not stop until he crossed the plane right here. Yeah, look Caught at this. It. This outside pass complete. And looks like that is Quana Kali that time around. Romo, Excuse Martinez. me, Bazette Woodley. We're in the 88, the not the point. 80. Two weights on the jersey as Romo Martinez goes forward with the kick. And, and that is, is good. Jose Romo Martinez to tie this game up at 10 apiece. Talik Bethea, he hasn't been asked to throw the ball much. That's just his seventh throw, his fourth completion. It goes 28 yards to the house. Delaware State 10, North Carolina Central 10. And we have more of this game coming up for you after this break. You're watching MEAC Football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3.
14 ounce Delmonico. That's how steak is done. Longhorn Steakhouse. You can't fake steak. This is Miak Football on the Miak Digital Network and ESPN3. Told you at the top of the hour that we're going to have a great game for you, and it has not disappointed. North Carolina Central 10, Delaware State 10. After Tyleek Bethea tied it up, seam route, vertical route to the corner to Bazette Woodley, and he got the rest of the job done, working his way against the defensive back. A 28-yard touchdown. Two plays, 24 yards that last drive. It only took 45 Brian seconds. To kick off. That drive brought to you by North Carolina Eye, Ear, Nose, and Throat. Visit them online at nceent.com. As the Eagles call for a fair catch within the 20-yard line, which is a fair catch. One of the new rules they've instituted over the last few years. Trying to, to increase player safety, but Here's another look at that last vertical route to Bazette Woodley. A great catch there and the extra effort to beat the cornerback into the end zone. Yeah, uh, yeah. sometimes it's all you got to do is just stretch the ball out as long as the ball crosses, crosses the pylon. That is a touchdown in every I mean, Everybody likes those reception yardage, but a lot of the scouts, they look at those yak yardage. There's yards after catch and yards after contact as well. And he picked up a lot of them on both the Bought up both in those categories on that last catch. Yeah, absolutely. It's cool that you can catch the ball, but can you advance it further down the field? Hand off in the backfield for the tailback. He shakes his way outside as they go back to Jordan Freeman. Freeman, the quicker of the two backs. Isaiah Totten also with a lot of speed, but Jordan Freeman just has that acceleration that separates him away from this group of running backs for North Carolina Central. He picks up one. It's now second and nine. Absolutely. Speed kills in every football game in America. The Eagles in a stack formation. And the Eagles extending the count here. Davius Richard trying his best to bait Delaware. They were right there in the middle. The D tackle it stays down. The Eagles with five seconds to snap the ball. And now here's Richard looking. Throws on the seam route over the middle. It's incomplete. He was trying to find. Tyler Barnes Richard matched up very, cl very closely with Charles Peel or the DB. Incomplete. Charles Peel the junior from Washington, D.C., 11 tackles Correction. this Third season. And, nine. and he had strong coverage there, keeping his man from getting to the ball. Yeah, defense all over that, not allowing any separation from the cornerbacks and the wide receivers. Got a good play on defensively. Nine minutes to go here until we reach our midway point. North Carolina Central 10, Delaware State 10. Stavius Richard facing third down. Pressure's coming. He has Trevion Pratt. Pratt's going to try to run away from the defense. 30 20. And he right says, If you ain't got no giddy up, then giddy out my way. Trevion Pratt, 60 plus yards to the end zone. Absolutely. Remember when he talked about the run after the catch? A big one right here. Caught the ball in full stride and give him six. Another look at this. Great pass and catch to Trevion Pratt. He beat the defensive back and then just a sprint job right down the seams into the end zone. And North Carolina Central leads again 16 to 10. Ready to kick the extra point will be Adrian Olivo. And this Olivo. game all of a sudden rocketing into point. high gear. And the hold got down late, but Olivo able to get the kick done. The extra point is no good. And he gets the kick off, but he misses it wide. But a little bit of an issue on that snap and a hold there. The snap was good. The hold got down late. And it missed extra point. It's just the second quarter, but you never know how much that might change the game. Well, we've seen from both teams that they've been having a hard time doing the easiest of things, but just getting the snap correctly. Snap is everything. It gets the ball placement correctly. It gets the players back in rhythm. Little things like, like you said earlier, details matter. That last drive for North Carolina Central, those two, first two plays, it looked like nothing was going to happen, but then play number three. 74 yards to the house from Trevion Pratt. Closer look at that last drive brought to you by North Carolina Eye, Ear, Nose, and Throat. And Trevion Pratt, just nothing but green space in front of him as he puts North Carolina Central ahead 16 10. Absolutely great play. No stop players like that using their athleticism to separate from their defender. He said, look, Ma, I made a touchdown. And Trevion Pratt more than likely has got some family watching at home. 
Carlos sophomore from High Point, North Carolina. To kick for the Eagle. North Carolina Central, as we mentioned earlier, they've done well not just in Hannah recruiting in the area. LA. As Carlos Beltran Rodriguez will come out to kick this one away. He brought in inside the 20-yard line of Carano Lane. Trying to make his way through the seam in the middle of the field. He's not able to get it done this time. He will crunch him down to the 30-yard line. The 30 yard line. And that's where, where Delaware State will start their next drive. Delaware State. So the Hornets, they've got to respond now, but the door is open. A missed extra point from North Carolina Central. If they can convert, they go up by one. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. And no things like that, you have to capitalize on every possession, including the extra points. They do matter later on down the stretch. Beautiful, sunshiny day here in Durham, North Carolina. Very comfortable temperature, about 76 degrees, a nice breeze. Couldn't ask for anything more for a Saturday football game as they go on the run once again. And nothing there for Richard Harris. He's become the prominent tailback for DSU over these last few drives. Richard Harris. Richard on Harris that last play carrier. ran to a brick wall on the defensive line for the Eagles. Two. Couldn't go nowhere on that play. Second and eight from the 32-yard line. It's two yards out of it. Second down and eight. And Richard Harris is going to jog off. They'll bring in the next tailback in the rotation. It's Delaware State again. They've been very committed to this run game. They've had 11 rush attempts, North Carolina Central with 12. Just seven pass attempts from Tyreek Bethea. And is it going to be another run here? They go back to Bryant Dallas, and he'll be brought down for a loss. Tyreek Bethea, again, he hasn't been asked to throw the ball much, but when he has, he's come through big. He had that big completion Dallas, to Woodley for the touchdown. He's four for seven Lost so far in this game. 56 Third yards completing at 57 percent. From the 31 yard line. I don't, I don't see why not. Why why they why they shy away from the passing game? Every time they've gone to the well, they've always got water. So uh, why go away from a good thing? At the same time, while they've done it, they've been doing it in their rotation. So let's see how they'll stick to it. It's North Carolina Central at the line. They'll just bring the four. A late blitzer coming in now. It's Bethea's pass is tipped, but it's caught that midfield. And another first down for DSU, this time complete once again to Bizet Woodley. Woodley with a great catch in traffic, able to concentrate on the ball, take the punishment, and still uh, pick up a great amount of yards on the play. Stellar State receiving core. They've got some size on them. As you look at Woodley bringing this one in, Woodley stands six foot five. He's the tallest on this wide receiver depth chart. Trey Gross at 6'4", Gonzalez at 6'3", and Quanta Colley, six foot as well. They'll go back on the ground here. Again, it's another run for Bryant Dallas. And they're just gonna keep pounding the rock on the ground. He gets a couple. Yeah, yeah, and size matters in terms of the wide receiver core for a quarterback. You don't have to worry about those tight spaces. You can just loft the ball up in the air Dallas, and have those the Titans carrier. over there on the wide receivers snatch two. those easy balls. Second down Second and eight, eight for North eight Carolina Central. Woodley leading right now. Two catches for 46 yards for Delaware State. Trevion Pratt is the leading receiver in this game. He has a one catch. He caught it after it was thrown for about 15 yards and then added on 60 more on his own. Second and eight for Delaware State. They'll spread out the field as Bethea passes towards the sideline. And it'll be incomplete. A smothering coverage Bad right there intended. from Justin Nicholson. Forces the Hornets One into third down. Looks like some miscommunication on the timing incomplete. on that throw. Uh, receiver came back to go third catch it, but by the time the ball came, it already hit him. Another look at the pass here from Bethea looking down the sideline. It's just like you said, look for the comeback route. Stuffed it a little bit short for Colley. And it's now third down. Kwanakali got him circled on our chart. 30 catches this year for 402 yards and four touchdowns. Delaware State trying to find an open receiver as a pass over the middle. It's incomplete, looking for Corona Lane. And Bethea just missed his target a little bit behind him. It's now fourth down. Yeah, uh, the Eagles secondary doing a great job of disrupting uh, the, the fourth, receiver's yeah. concentration and getting those receptions. Uh, great play defensively. And now going back to return will be North Carolina Central's 31. It's been a battle to the 31s in the punt return game today. Brandon Codrington for North Carolina Central and Karana Lane.
for Delaware State. Elaine has three kick returns so far today for 93 yards, and Codrington just one punt return for nine yards. Has one kick return as well for 10 yards, and that was when he muffed the reception twice. As Fidel Romo Martinez sends it away, end over end. Codrington's going to take a chance on this one from the 15-yard line. He's able to get out of a couple of tackles and swim along the ground for about five yards. And the Eagles will start at the 21-yard line when we get back from the break. Eagles lead 16-10, courtesy of the long pass of Trevion Pratt, 74 yards to the house. You're watching MEAC Football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. I'm 14 Ounce Delmonico. That's how steak is done. Longhorn Steakhouse. You can't fake steak. MEAC Football on the ESPN3 and the MEAC Digital Network. North Carolina Central taking on Delaware State. They lead 16-10. And the Eagles trying to build on to their lead as they take over just inside their own 20-yard line. Davius Richard will hand it off to Collier. Collier trying to shake past the defender on the corner, but able to clamp him down Collier, right there. Delaware the State's number 25, Dwayne Granger. Yeah, that play had big Pick potential. Three, uh, stop by the lone third, defender. I uh, wish he could take that one back. Seven from the 22. And you can see right after that play was over, Mookie Collier highly upset with himself, thinking, you know, if I made a different cut, he might have been able to do something else with it. But second down and seven, he gets three yards out of it. And the Eagles trying to continue. And another handoff here for Collier. Collier up the middle this time, carrying some tacklers with him. Another carry of about three or four. Collier, see, like you said, using that, that running back core, using multiple guys who can step up and make plays for them to, on the running wall. Third and two. And I go to Collier one more time, and Collier runs over the defensive tackle. Is that going to be enough for him to get the first down here? That's the question. Maybe a little bit yards short. About the and they're going to lean the Take sticks forward. And Mookie line. Collier, he picked up the ball. He identified the guy and said, you, I'm going to run you over. And that's Brandon Carswell. He's our... One of our players to watch, and he found him there and took him down. And another look there at Trevion Pratt has that one catch today, but that one catch, a game changer, 74 yards down the field, and he's the reason why North Carolina Central leads this game. Well, why not? They should go to him on, the, on his next drive if it's a, it's a, like a passing play. And he, earlier in this game, you talked about going to the well. Looks like it's dry right there for North Carolina Central. Collier. They go to Trevion Pratt, excuse me, to Mookie Collier. And they go right around the corner and staple him to the turf. Oh, we'll see right here defensively. They get right at him. The ball will be played the back the truck. And they're taking him down in the backfield. Was Push central back for a loss of four. Second and 14. They'll spread everybody out. Davius Richard looking to show off his arm. And he throws it right to Delaware State. An interception by Charles Peeler, his first of the year. And that sends the Hornets into, into a frenzy. Oh, that would have been a great play if Charles Peeler played for the Eagles and not the Hornets. Uh, unfortunate interception uh, for the Eagles on that play. And another look here is Davius Richard looking downfield. And it looked like he just missed his receiver. And he didn't miss him by much looking for Tyler Barnes. But right past him, he goes to Delaware State, and the Hornets take it away. And now here's their chance to go in front once again. Delaware State. It's a first and ten for the Hornets. They're inside the 40-yard line in Eagle territory. And now it's up to their quarterback, Tyleek Bethea. He's thrown one touchdown pass in this game, looking for a second. Bethea goes on the play action, slings it on the flat route. Room there for the tight end. And he'll carry it forward for a few. That's Thomas Bertrand Hudon once Thomas again. Bertrand Hudson. And that's extension. enough for a first down. Catch for about 11 yards Takes for the, the man yard from line. Quebec. As soon as Bethea rolled out, out of the pocket, he, he brought so much State. attention out on himself that it, the, the rest of the defenders forgot about number 36. And he just easily just passed it to him for a nice game. And Bertrand Hudon, he's going to line up just off the left tackle in the tight end position. And they'll go on the handoff here this time around. Richard Harris on the carry. 
breaks the wall forward for about three. Richard Harris, the ball carrier. Second down for DSU. Time's running short. There's just three minutes left here in this first half. Making our way towards our midway break. Joshua, you look at what these teams have done. What stood out to you so far? Well, both these teams are performing night and day from their first uh, quarter uh, performance. Uh, they're scoring more, and they're taking more risks down the field. So that's what I like to see about these both teams. A two-back set now for the Hornets. And they'll go on the option again. It's Bethea. Bethea into clean space. He'll slide down to avoid the contact, but not before he picks up about seven. They're the smart thing to slide. Uh, the one thing, you don't want to have your quarterback taking those huge hits. So uh, Bethea with the correct decision to slide. He does enough to pick up the first down. And Delaware State, it's the second time today that they've run this exact option play. They've gone outside. And the Eagles not expecting Bethea to run with it. They go to that two-back set. They fake the dive. And it's just standard triple option from there. But just using your legs, using your the athleticism to uh, pick up a couple more yards. Uh, sometimes the, you're not going to have a chance to pass the ball. you got to use your legs. Hornets inside the red zone. They'll hand this one off to the tailback, and he's across the 10, inside the 5, still turning his legs. He'll be brought down at about the 2-yard line, Bryant Dallas. And the Hornets Bryant ready, Dallas. trying to go back in front of this game. Had a, a hold of Eagles on on his back, carrying them as he's uh, stumbling and he bubbling to uh, almost to a touchdown, line. but they stopped him just shy. We're at his first and goal. Delaware State will Delaware swap State. out the tailbacks now and take another look here. And coming right into your living room is the tailback, Bryant Dallas. And just like you said, just carrying all those Eagles with him. Deontay Fair was there to make the tackle, but North Carolina Central is going to expend one of their three timeouts here in this first half. North Carolina Central. Yeah, coach is going to call a timeout. See if he can change some things up defensively. They're not, uh, not seeing what he likes to see out there. A 30-second timeout. And while they do so, let's take a moment to see what's happening around the MEAC as it's been a lot of shakeups as Florida A&M now at the top of the MEAC after they took down North Carolina A&T last week. Florida A&M on a tear and they are now into the top 25 poll. And, uh, um, and they're showing that they, uh, that they can definitely win at any moment. Uh, definitely following our all center as far as rushing the ball and also passing. Uh, they're one of the top teams in the NBA, just like you said. And Florida A&M, they're actually in trouble right now, trailing Morgan State six to nothing in the third quarter, just down the road from here in Greensboro. It's got to be a lot of happy homecoming goers there. North Carolina A&T meeting Howard 54 to six in the third quarter. 24 points in the second quarter. 20 points in this third quarter, and they're not done yet. An absolute massacre there in Greensboro. And here is Delaware State running very quickly out of the timeout. They try to go on the Wildcat play there, but stopped very quickly was Thomas Bertrand Houdon. And it's now second and goal. Had no other answers on that Thomas play. Uh, quickly swallowed up by the defensive the line of the Eagles. Second down okay. now. Second and goal. As Delaware State tried to catch the Eagles unaware and it looks like they're going to bring the quarterback back onto the field now but they have watched the last one from the sideline now a two back set with one wide receiver but they are looking on the fade route and a little miscommunication there he tried to throw the jump ball for Quanacali he started the quick in route and honestly, if he had saw the quick end, that's six points for DSU. Yeah, yeah, that's really that's, that's all it takes is just a split decision. Come on, Eagle fans. That can be the difference between an incomplete pass and a touchdown. And Delaware State, after going to the Wildcat and trying the fade route, they're going to call the timeout here and talk it over and get everybody onto the same page. The most important thing as we go back to the MEAC scoreboard is North Carolina A&T, or rather the most impressive thing, they're playing again in six days. They played on Sunday on the field at Bragg Memorial Stadium in Tallahassee against Florida A&M. That match was pushed a day ahead because of the tropical storm rolling through. They waited to make sure all the conditions were gone. They played on Sunday afternoon. They fell in an overtime game. And now they're back at home getting things done. And now a 4 o'clock game will be South Carolina State on the road at Bethune-Cookman. Bethune-Cookman is one of two undefeated teams left in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. Florida A&M is 4-0. Bethune-Cookman 4-0 as well. As Delaware State is back on the field 
Two back set once again. And a timeout, or a stoppage rather. Timeout. And another timeout taken okay, by North Carolina team. Central. Team, Oliver, over, over there. Um, see if he can get his guys back in huddle so they can make some more adjustments at the line of scrimmage. Just 53 seconds left in the first oh, half. And because there's only 53 seconds left, these timeouts, they don't carry into the second half. So you might as well use them and make sure that you get them ready in what is a critical situation right now. Delaware State down by six. A touchdown gives them an opportunity to go ahead by one. So, so let's see if the Eagles defensively can make a stop here and uh, uh, make sure that they still have the winning edge um, going into halftime. Our undergraduate, graduate, and Both teams out of the huddle now. As the, same quality the Eagles look to defend money. these last four yards that separate them and their own end zone. Delaware State will flip their package over and put Bizet Woodley, wide receiver at the top of the screen in this formation. Now let's see if Bethea will call Woodley's number again. Bethea, one last message to the offensive line. Calls for the snap now, a handoff now for the tailback. Looked like he was nearly tripped up in the backfield. He runs into a crush of players, and the Eagles stop him dead. See, I was thinking that it was probably going to go do a fake, uh, make the defense think they was going to run and throw it over the top of the defense, but they uh, steadfast on the run game. Another look here is... They go to Bryant Dallas. Dallas try to make his way through the gap in the tackles on the left side. And with 25 seconds left in the half, I think the Hornets are just going to try to melt this clock down and use their last timeout, the last possible second. And they have a decision to make. You can either go for it here, or you can take the points. What would you do? Uh, me personally, I have what eight seconds left. The only thing I want to do in this time is try to do the best thing I can is by tying the game up. So if I got to go for six, I'm going go for six. So Delaware State's going to call the timeout here. And they'll make their decision on what they're going to plan to do. As Delaware State had the ball first to start this game. So they'll be kicking off to North Carolina Central. So if they do go for it and they don't convert, they're going to have to wait for North Carolina Central to get finished with the ball in the second half. But if you do go for it, then you're defending with a lead if you do score. So, Coach Milstead making that decision for Delaware State. Coach Milstead, he actually has a bit of a connection to North Carolina Central University. We'll talk about that a little later on in our broadcast. Looks like the Hornets are going to go for the field goal here. They'll bring out Jose Romo Martinez. He connected from 45 yards out earlier in this game. This kick from 21. The snap and hold are clean. The kick from Romo Martinez is through the pipes. The is good. Field goal is good, and that is the end of the first 30 minutes of play. North Carolina Central ahead by three, 16 to 13. And you've been tuned in to MIAC football on the MIAC Digital Network. We'll take a break, and we'll break down the first half for you. This is MIAC football on the MIAC Digital Network and ESPN3. house you can't fake steak free tailgate with mouth-watering chicken fresh buttery biscuits flavorful fixings and freshly steeped legendary iced tea this is MIAC football on the MIAC digital network and ESPN3 alongside myself is Joshua Stephenson Jonathan Dern here at O'Kelly Riddick Stadium as North Carolina Central University hosts Delaware State Delaware State fires last at the end of the half, but it's North Carolina Central with the lead, 16-13, to 13, as we reach our midway point. Well, both teams started out kind of slow in the first quarter, uh, not really doing much, a lot of uh, three and outs, but in the second quarter, both teams have come alive for, for Central, starting off with Isaiah Top with a five-yard run uh, to give them their first lead of the game, and then opponents come right back on the next uh Rob and uh, throw down the field, and they score a touchdown to them too. So both teams, like I said, coming alive in the second quarter. Take a look at our stats here as we're here in our halftime show presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Carolina. North Carolina Central is outgaining Delaware State right now, and outgaining them 178 to 134. Both teams have run the exact same number of plays, 30 plays, 
But you look back to North Carolina Central's last game during the bye week, excuse me, before the bye week, they outgained Bethune Cookman by over 150 yards, but didn't leave with the win. So now it's up to North Carolina Central to finish the job here in the second half. Well, it's one thing you don't want to put too much uh, emphasis on uh, not making the team be able to score, and you're not putting points on the board, too. Uh, NCC has got a problem that so far in the season. They're allowing 26.1 points per game, but they're only putting up 18. So you got to uh, do a good job of uh, not uh, allowing a team to score that many points. Right now for North Carolina Central is Davius Richard. He's 8 for 14, 141 yards. Ty Lake Pathea, 6 for 20, excuse me, 6 for 12 for 84 yards as well. And we'll break down their performances in a little bit. This is our halftime show presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield. And you're watching MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. We'll have a little bit more about this first half. Monaco, that's how steak is done. Longhorn Steakhouse, you can't fake steak. Mac football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. Joshua Stephenson and Jonathan Duran here at O'Kelly Riddick Stadium as North Carolina Central meets Delaware State. The Eagles looking to get back on track here in the conference standings and move their way up. As what's been talked about very much is that it is still possible to win the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference with two losses. North Carolina Central is 1-2 and two in league play. Delaware State is 0-4. The Eagles, of course, coming off of their bye week. The Hornets will have their bye later in the season. Their bye week, trying to capitalize. Far, uh, defensively, uh, Central coming into this game is leading six in the MEAC as far as takeaways. With seven teams so far, you might want to add a couple too, and so maybe, what, like 19 now? so far so they're doing a great job of making their um the offense force turnovers two fumbles forced and recovered by north carolina central a muffed punt and then a fumble force on that pass to trey gross he fumbled at midfield and north carolina central was able to take advantage we look at what's going on in the mid eastern athletic conference right now florida a and m they watched morgan state score first but they've tied it up at seven all up in charm city baltimore maryland Still in the first quarter. North Carolina A&T just starting the fourth quarter. They lead Howard 57-6. to That game was 10-6 to after the first frame. But A&T has scored 47 points in the second and third quarters combined. South Carolina State trying to knock off undefeated Bethune-Cookman at 4 o'clock today. And if you're a North Carolina Central fan, you're watching... That South Carolina State game and that Morgan State game saying, hey, you know what? We still got a chance because North Carolina A&T is still ahead for the Eagles. And what you have to do is you have to take opportunities like that on your schedule. If you see the other teams that are starting to slide off and losing games that they should win, that gives you an opportunity to move up as far as in the seeding. Looking elsewhere on the scoreboard and locally, one of the largest games in the triangle it's Duke and Carolina. They're playing that game as they battle for the victory bell. Always a big time happening here in the Bull City whenever that game happens, whether it's in Durham at Wallace Wade Stadium or in Chapel Hill at Keenan Stadium. And the Blue Devils and the Tar Heels will start their game at the top of the hour. Over the last few years, it's been Duke that's been ahead of the rivalry. And it's been a good look for the Bull City as Duke and North Carolina Central have been very strong proponents for this city. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Everybody talks about the rivalry on the on the college basketball spectrum, but uh, it's still a great rivalry as far as the football spectrum too as well. This is MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network. We'll take a short break and come back with a closer look at the stats here after the first half. We'll have more for you on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network and on ESPN3. Alongside myself, Joshua Stephenson and Jonathan Duran here at O'Kelly Riddick Stadium. 16-13 is our score at the midway point. This is also our halftime show presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Carolina. A great game that we've been able to watch so far today and a lot of big plays so far in this game. Yeah, the Eagles controlling the game as far as the passing game. Uh, still looking to get the run game 
uh, on the same level as, as the pass, but uh, but it doesn't matter in those situations. When you're passing the ball that well, uh, you don't want to stop a good thing. The run game for North Carolina Central has been Isaiah Todd. And he has four carries for 19 yards and one touchdown. Bryant Dallas leading the way for Delaware State with nine carries for 29 yards and one score. But, Joshua, let's take a moment and go back and look at our impact play of the first half. Came here in the second quarter as North Carolina Central was looking down the field and in the pocket. Davius Richard, he connects with Trevion Pratt. So he drops back and looks to see there's some separation from the cornerback and the, and the receiver. And as soon as the ball hit his hands, he was gone with it. Trevion Pratt. That's his one catch so far in this game, but it counts for 74 yards as North Carolina Central is leading in this contest. 16 to 13, and that score is the separator between these two sides. And those 74 yards has pushed Davius Richard over the 100-yard passing mark. Has 141 yards today. Tyleek Bethea, 6 for 12 for 84 yards. Hasn't passed much, but when he has passed, he's been efficient. Yeah, 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 yeah. and absolutely. There have been moments where he was forced to pass even when he didn't want to and still he had the skill set to complete the play so I see that they should definitely open up more as far as the passing on the playbook. This game still hanging in the balance and we'll have the ending to this game. 30 more minutes to play and we'll have those for you next. This is MIAC Football on the MIAC Digital Network as North Carolina Central leads Delaware State 16 to 13 at the half. Think you're done. Longhorn Steakhouse. You can't fake steak. MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. We are live from O. Kelly Riddick Stadium. We played 30 minutes of great football. We've got 30 more coming up for you now. North Carolina Central leads this game 16-13 to alongside myself, Joshua Stevenson. I'm Jonathan Duran, and you're getting ready for what's going to be another great 30 minutes of action. These first 30 didn't disappoint. First quarter started a little slow, and then rocketed in action back and forth in the second quarter now we'll see what the third quarter has in store as Cotterington is ready to return this one from his own five yard line shakes past a couple of tackles staying on his feet trying to drive his feet forward and he'll be brought down at about the 22 yard line and that's where North Carolina Central will have their first drive of the second half excuse me that's Jordan Freeman that time around because we've seen Corona Lane pretty wild for Delaware State. Yeah, some people like to forget about the special teams aspect. Of the, uh, that's just as important as offense or defense. You can definitely score points in a hurry uh, in terms of the special team. Head coach Trey Oliver, he was a punter when he was here at Delaware State. He knows something about special teams. As a matter of fact, he was the assistant coach for special teams at Delaware State when he started his coaching career. As Isaiah Totten is weaving his way through, and he might have a seal as he heads towards the top of the field. He's at the 40-yard line, finally pushed down. And there is a Isaiah Hornet down Patton. behind the boy. The he's gotten himself to his feet. It's going to look like he's going to be able to walk out. off, but he'll head back down to the ground here, and he's going to need some treatment here. But say, take another look at this Isaiah Totten run. Not really a design counter. He was supposed to go that way, but... Switches the field and takes advantage of, of his blockers ahead of him. E.J. Hicks with a great lead block on the outside. Totten in the midst of the storm, being able to stay cool behind the line of scrimmage and shift between different blockers. Like I said, that play was not designed to go that way, but he, uh, on a stop of a dime, uh, switched directions and gained a nice chunk of yards. And Kamari Jackson was the Hornet that was down behind the play, the redshirt sophomore from Newport News, Virginia. He has one pass breakup in this game. Made a nice diving catch on the sideline. Didn't stay inbounds to record the interception. But he has been an impact player for DSU, and they're going to miss him while he's on the sideline. He's off now. He's able to walk off on his own power. The North Carolina Central looking Shotgun to the pistol. Still working with Isaiah Totten. Now back to the shotgun. Another handoff for Totten, and... Delaware State quickly into the backfield. Christian Johnson leading the, the way. And right behind Johnson. By Christian Looks Johnson. like that was number 58, Tristan Murren as well. Well, for players like Cotton, who's the third line. leading rusher in the mid, you have to have so much attention put towards him because he can make plays out of no way. And Delaware State made sure there was no way for him to make a play on that last carry. Second down now. He lost about three yards on the carry. 
Just starting here in this third quarter. North Carolina Central ahead by three. Pass over the middle. A low reception, but brought in by E.J. Hicks. A first down for North Carolina Central. Up to the 45 in Hornet territory. Had to use some elbow grease on that ball. Had to sling it in between a couple defenders. They're able to make the crest. And look at this one looking right down the tackles. Oh, the great referee had to, had to duck on that one. <laughs> a great sliding catch by E.J. Hicks there. Another first down for North Carolina Central. Richard, over 150 yards passing now. And the Eagles again mixing up the snap count. Davius Richard, the freshman from Bell Glade, Florida, making his mark as an Eagle in the pocket, and he waits just a hair too long. If he takes off sooner, he might have positive yardage, but instead he's taken down by Christian Johnson again. Got to make a decision. Sometimes when the pocket collapses, you got two Pass options. You can throw the ball away or use your athleticism to get a couple more yards. That time you just stood there. And there's Richard and right about here. That's okay. when Second his timer ahead. has to be going off. You get five seconds in the pocket. Once you hit zero, you got to be making a decision. Absolutely. But uh, that time he didn't do it. That, that cost him on that drive. And a no loss as well. So it's about a free play, really, for North Carolina Central. It's now second down. Richard looking, and he's going to take a big hit. Shrugs out of it, still on his feet. Are you kidding me? Davius Richard's going to push the pile, and he's going to get three yards out of that. Way to be tenacious on that play. Richard could have very easy had, had let go and then the make the receiver get those negative yards, but muscled up and kept on going. Another look here, Davius Richard, Delaware State. They collapse the pocket. They bring that pressure in, and he takes on three different tacklers and leaves them all in his wake. Yeah, they, that type of stuff really motivates your teammates. Uh, spark plug here on offense, Davies Richard. It's third and eight now for North Carolina Central. One big conversion already. Richard pass over the middle, leaping catch, incomplete. In and out of the hands of Deshaun Stevens. And Delaware State, led by Jawain Granger, they shut that play down very quickly. It's fourth down. Now in the first half, he had the same similar play where he caught up with two hands and caught it, but on this uh, time, uh, didn't uh, snag the ball in that time. And now here's that pass, another look at it, incomplete for Deshaun Stevens. He was able to get his hands on it, but Jawain Granger in there very quickly. Eight pass breakups, and it's going to add to his ledger right there. He's the leader. And pass defenses for Delaware State as the Hornets nearly blocked that one, and they're going to run into the kicker here. And that might be enough for North Carolina Central to push the sticks forward. This punt is going to be down to the oh, two-yard yeah. line, so it's a win-win situation line. for North Carolina Central. But, of course, field. the greatest win would be if they hold on to the ball, if they do call this to be roughing instead of running into. Yeah, and I believe so. Uh, he did everything he could to not to hit the kicker, but uh, the momentum couldn't stop him. And it looks like they're asking Coach Oliver what he wants to do. They're telling him the ball is down there at the two. And the white hands open up his communicator, sending on the College Football 150 logo, a banner year. So it is just running into the kicker. It wasn't really the biggest collision that could have happened. So it's running into the kicker, so North Carolina Central will decline the penalty, and the punt will be down at the two-yard line. John Picaro, either way, like we said, it was a win-win situation, and Delaware State is now in their worst field position in today's game. Yeah, the Eagles had that same situation. It sort of happened to them where they got really not that good a field position. Let's see how the Hornets uh, act on it. Before this, their worst start was at their own 22. And now they'll have the ball for the first time here in the second half at their own two-yard line. And they're going to look towards Tyleek Bethea as they look towards the sideline. The Eagle cheerleading squad, squad, the ladies of Champaign, are trying to try to push this Eagle defense forward, try to get a safety here. And that could be a big momentum swing. Yeah, absolutely. Safeties don't come often, but when they do, they're a big morale boost for the team. Handoff here for the tailback, Bryant Dallas. He breaks across the plane. How much more did he get? It might be a loss of one. No gain. No gain on the play. It's second down. Actually, a loss of one. Right, excuse me. They will say a loss of one. So it is now second, second and 11, 11 from their own one-yard line. line. That defensive front line putting the pressure on the O-line. Tackle is able to seep through and wrap up the ball carrier. North Carolina Central into the, back, in the backfield very quickly. 
They're going to try it again here. Second and 11. Hornets backed up. Here's a pass here from Bethea. It's incomplete. And Nicholson wasn't actually even looking at the ball, but it runs into him. He'll get credit for the pass breakup. Pass was intended for Bizette Woodley. Well, really, all I had to do was just uh, turn around. Uh, the ball hit him before he realized what, it, what had happened. So thank the back of your helmet for, for that disruption. Another look at the pass here. Pass runs into Nicholson as he was able to get in front of Woodley. Of course, the old adage, works in football or works in basketball, ball you man. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And Nicholson adhered to that. The ball hit him, didn't get to the man. Yeah, if I say. He used the back of his head as a as a shield. Third and 11 for the Hornets, but they had a pass again. He's going to roll out of the end zone looking to throw with it. Finally passes over the middle. is complete to Collie, and that's going to be enough for the first down up to the 15. So a strong pass there from Bethea extends the drive for the Hornets. Yeah, long, Roberts, long tight end Isaiah Williams was wide open. All but they had to do was just roll out, look further down the field, and make the huge play. But he decided to go what was best in front of him. Where it'll be first and ten. Talik Bethea looking up field, able to scramble out and found the man open. He was waving his hand at him and had no problem getting the ball to him. Back into the two back set. They'll go on the dive this time around, and the Eagles able to cut him down coming through the line. And that almost went for a big gainer there for Delaware State on the All carry. Right, the Harris making the tackle for North Carolina Central with Cyrus Stanback. But they went back into that two back set. They've been running the triple option out of that all game. They go to the dive. And it almost broke for a big one. Yeah, it's been working on season. So that's why you have to set up the run early. It makes the defense fully commit to the run. And then you can easily switch it up on them. Five yards on that first play. Now second down. They'll go on the screen here. Pass is complete to Harris. And he'll lower his shoulders and go forward. Excuse me. That's Bryant Dallas that time around. Bryant Dallas. And he'll on move the, the Hornets to another he first down. That's some great blocking there from the receivers. They would make a little lane for, for the catch. And, and the Hornets get another first down. A nice pocket of Columbia blue shirts on the opposite side cheering on the visiting team. I'll tell you one thing about the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. Wherever these teams go, they have a great fan following for every football game. Yeah, absolutely. Like, like You like to see that the, the fans are there supporting their team no matter where they go. Another handoff in North Carolina Central into the backfield, almost meeting Bryant Dallas at the mesh point. Darius Royster Bryant into Dallas the backfield, the joined by Patrick Connor. Bryant Dallas Patrick on that Connor. play looking up for help. Like, where are my blockers? And this front seven for North Carolina Central, you Ball look at that at into the backfield. Patrick line. Connor, it looked like he just teleported into the backfield Second past that offensive line. Yeah, it looked like Bryant Dallas was wearing a meat necklace. And these Eagles, they like to eat. Absolutely. Second and 12 now for Delaware State. And rolling out a boot for Bethea. Throws on the run. That pass is complete. What a pitch and catch there to Jordan Hanna. His first target today, and he doesn't waste it. Yeah, Hanna with the nice hands on the play, able to complete the pass for him to get the ball moving. Another look here, Bethea rolling out. And they throw a mirror on it. It goes 12 to 21. That pass complete for about 15 yards. Jordan Hanna, the senior from Brooklyn, New York. And it's another first down for Delaware State, and they're getting it done in the air on this drive. We talked about how much they ran the football in the first half, and they're turning it around now. But they are looking to pass again. Timer running out. That pass is batted. It's intercepted by North Carolina Central. And they're going to bring this one back in the opposite way. North Carolina Central with their third takeaway in today's game. And they continue to stay at the top of the heap in takeaways in all of college football. Talk about being at the right place at the right time. Uh, but they have throws the ball. The receiver doesn't catch it. So it's a live ball in the air. Uh, Eagles with the second they're able to catch it. Jerome Foster, he picks up his second interception. And now, excuse me, his second interception this season in North Carolina Central. Now we'll get the ball back at the 40-yard line. And we're going to send this to a media timeout. This is MIAC Football on the MIAC Digital Network and ESPN3. MIAC Football on the MIAC Digital Network 
North Carolina Central hosting Delaware State. 16-13, North Carolina Central ahead here in the third quarter as the Eagles force their third takeaway in today's game. Patrick Connor roaming for North Carolina Central. The pass goes up. It's batted there as the Eagles break it apart, and Connor in there picks up his second interception this season. Yeah, see, you, you can see it started with the disruption in the pocket. The defensive line of the Eagles made Bethea uh, throw an inaccurate pass that caused uh, the receiver to not have a time to even catch the ball that led to a turnover for the Eagles. That's Joshua Stephenson. I'm Jonathan Duran here at O'Kelly Riddick Stadium. Durham, North Carolina, the site of today's contest. As during our timeout, the referee went underneath the headsets. And it looks like there might be something for him to discuss. He's going to bring Coach Oliver over to him. And the refs are trying to figure out what exactly they're going to do with the football here. I don't know what might have happened on the field that they needed to review. But our referee looks like he's ready to make the call now. North Carolina Central, number 44, had a uniform issue. He is now number one. The replay system is down. There are no replays available at the moment. We will notify you if it comes back online. Thank you. All right, well, sometimes things happen. And Patrick Connor, excuse me. Yep, Patrick Connor was wearing... 40, and now he's wearing number one. Had a uniform issue earlier in this game, so credit the interception to him. And North Carolina Central now is going to take over at the 40-yard line, going from left to right, trying to get into the end zone once again and extend their lead. They'll start with a read option in the backfield, carrying the ball forward is the backup quarterback, on the quarterback keeper, Micah Zanders on the carry that time. That is and this Zanders. is Micah Zanders big he heroic return. We saw him at the beginning of the season. The he was injured and now North Carolina Central going on the hurry up. Zanders hands this one off in the backfield. Turning the corner is Freeman. Freeman watches his blockers and will carry it up to about the 45 yard line and that is enough for a first Jordan down. Freeman. Micah Zanders he was the starting quarterback for North Carolina Central this year. The red shirt senior from Jacksonville, Florida. Over his career, he's completed seven, excuse me, this season, seven completions, 122 yards and one interception, but just has been injured over these last few weeks and now carrying the football forward with no problem up to the 40-yard line. Looks like he's got a little bit of extra juice finally being back on the field. Eagles using a two-quarterback system. Uh, it's good to know that whatever person is called up for, for the next man's job that they can not convert on these downs, and Xanders is doing that efficiency so far. Michael Xanders, 17 for 33 this season. To correct myself, 51.5% pass completion. They go on the read option again. Xanders carries it up to about the 35. Is that going to be enough for the first down? They're going to mark him just shy. And it'll be third and one. But Micah Xanders running like a man on a mission right now. If the tempo wasn't even higher than before, then what your Eagles play with, I guess it's getting even higher and more. Xanders using a hurry-up offense to keep the Hornets on, on his heels. Everybody's set. And there's Jordan Freeman. He's away all of the tackle into the 20-yard line. Brought down just by the shoestrings by Delaware State. Freeman, the ball Andrew Reese, the tackler there. Try to keep up. Trying to keep up. Lost a little bit of his balance on there. And you look at the replay. Andrew Reese covered a lot of ground to get there. The Eagles continue on the read in the backfield. And this time they get to the pressure point. Micah Zander stopped Zander. after a gain for All about two. And oh, flags thrown some, after uh, the play. Some intense right there between uh, the Hornets and the Eagles there. Getting out of each other's face. Some extracurriculars on the near sideline and flags immediately thrown. And the referees will sort this out. And if it goes against North Carolina Central, it's going to erase a lot of hard work. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 17, defense. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 84, offense. No five offset. Result out of play. That's Devin Smith for Delaware State. And a Zach Kellum for North Carolina Central. After the play was done, both of them had a little bit of extra to say. They got a little too close to each other. Referee saying, All right, we got to break this up. Play with an edge, but play with respect always. And here's another look at it right here. You look on the right side of your screen. They just got tied up, face mask to face mask. 
Well, like a little bit of a hockey fight there when both of the players grabbing on to the collars of the jerseys. They brought each other together and they weren't going to let them go. Uh, can I repeat what uh, he what head coach Oliver said, but let me sum it up to uh, Keelum. You should not have done that. Pass to the end zone complete to Ryan McDaniel. Touchdown, North Carolina Central. He sits down and puts North Carolina Central ahead by nine. Well, as quickly as Richard entered back, entered back into the game, he throws the touchdown, and now he's right back on the sidelines. Uh, way to stay efficient. This is the second touchdown of the game. The two-quarterback system working to a plum for North Carolina Central. Micah Xanders comes in, pushes North Carolina Central down the field on the read option with Freeman, and Davius Richard comes back and throws an absolute dime to the end zone for McDaniel. Here's the extra point. And this time the snap and hold good, and the kick good as well. The Eagles leading now 23 to 13 here in the third quarter. As we head to a media timeout, another look at Ryan McDaniel putting North Carolina Central ahead at 23-13. You're watching MEAC Football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. North Carolina Central leading Delaware State 23-13 as the Eagles have tightened up their aerial attack. Another passing touchdown and North Carolina Central is now leading this contest 23-13. Two quarterbacks push North Carolina Central down the field and they both get the job done. Well, hopefully uh, on the Hornet side of the they're looking to stop the bleeding. They allowed two consecutive touchdowns already uh, since That's the first half. Three guys on the, kick -off. the Eagles will kick this ball off short. It goes to the up man, and he looks like he might try to break his way through. He's brought down to the 40-yard line. Joshua Stephenson alongside Jonathan right, Duran here at on the return. O'Kelly Reddick Stadium. Take a look at that last drive for the Eagles. Down. Getting into the end zone, of course, as we said, it was Micah Zanders came in and led the way, but the final play, a 20-yard strike from Davius Richard. Seven plays, 60 yards, two minutes and 20 seconds. Closer look at that drive brought to you by North Carolina Eye, Ear, Nose, and Throat. And Joshua, North Carolina Central's clicking. What is it going to take for Delaware State to click? Well, they have to have some more um – a little more versatility into their offense. So far, they've just been uh, using the run game in order to get uh, consecutive downs. But now they have to use the passing game, which has not failed them so far in this game, uh, except for a couple of takeaways. Play action from Bethea. Pressure's coming in, and he's going to be rolled in the backfield. North Carolina Central picks up the sack in their big number 99, Chuck Manning for North Carolina Central. Defensive line swarming the offensive line. They didn't have enough blockers, it seemed. Through the tackle. Quarterback. You see Chuck Manning just quick off the mark. He beats that right guard. And he drives Delaware State back six yards. This Eagle defense has been great and getting into the backfield all season long, and they're continuing that today. It's North Carolina Central. They pick up their eighth tackle for loss. Here's a pass on the swing route to the outside. It's complete to Dallas. Excuse me, that's number 35, Richard Harris, and he sprints back to about the original line of scrimmage. Third down. Long, complete. Defense, long defensive men on the ego Ball side. Made him rush towards the, the sidelines. He had no other way. Line. About four minutes to go here in the third quarter. On the 40. 40. Hard fought third game going 11. both ways here. Third and 11, they get some of those yardage back after the big loss. Six yards going backwards, forced by Chuck Manning on the first play of this drive. And now Delaware State trying to convert on third and 11. Bethea with the ball in his hands. Here comes the pressure. It's incomplete, nearly intercepted. As North Carolina. Get out of it. Didn't even care the the receiver was still there. Almost tried to make the interception, uh, but couldn't get the ball in. And he ran that route like that pass was intended for. It's fourth down now as Brandon Codrington will have an opportunity to return. Again, it's been a battle of the 31s. Corona Lane for Delaware State almost took one 65 yards to the house. See if Codrington 
will be able to do the same for North Carolina Central. As Hose, excuse me, Fidel Romo Martinez sends it away. This punt is going to go short, bounces at the 30. And will be down at about the 20 yard line, and that's where North Carolina Central will take over. Media timeout coming up 23 13. North Carolina Central leads. You're watching MEAC Football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. To reach that blissful state of doneness. So let's get after it. What would you like the power to do? Ball on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. Joshua Stevenson alongside myself, Jonathan Duran here at O'Kelly Riddick Stadium. North Carolina Central starting to turn it on here in the second half. Micah Zanders comes in and goes on the ground with a read option and Davis Richard finishes it. Now here's Davis Richard trying to start it on the ground here. He'll carry it for about maybe a yard if the referees are generous. Yeah, and hopefully they can bring that two-quarterback system out. I, I notice on that drive, it kind of put the defense on his heels. They didn't know which way uh, to stop the madness. Uh, let's see if they can uh, do that again. Second and nine now for North Carolina Central. Davius Richard, he's usually known as the running quarterback, but Micah Zanders on that last drive, four carries for 18 yards. And here's Richard looking to pass, but... Flag thrown, a false start called against North Carolina Central after they motioned to the tailback. Flag on the field. Prior to the snap, false start, offense number 50. Five-yard penalty, second down. It's another false start on the offensive line. It's been a problem for North Carolina Central over these last few games. Those type of plays really do frustrate a, um, a coach and staff because you got to learn how to stay disciplined right here on the line of scrimmage. And you look back at that last drive from uh, – Micah Zanders as he was able to be a spark plug for North Carolina Central. Again, four carries for 18 yards. It's been a while since we've seen him. He made a couple of appearances at the beginning of the year before being injured. And now here's Davius Richard looking to pass a parabola over the middle, just too far away from his receiver. And Ryan McDaniel, who is the intended target, if he brings that in, he is gone. Oh, yeah, that has the whole stadium up and ready to accelerate, but... Uh, an overthrow really a letdown on that play. That could have been a huge favor for the Eagles. Another look here from Davius Richard. He's in the pocket, plants his feet, and tell you what, he's got a cannon. He let that one go from the 10-yard line in his own side, and that carries about 50 yards through the year when it finally hit at the 40-yard line on the opposite side. Absolutely. Absolutely. The gunslinger, Richard. Third down. About 14 yards to go for North Carolina Central after the false start impeded their progress. Richard steps out of the tackle, moves up in the pocket, and that pass is incomplete. He was looking for Tyler Barnes, and he nearly hung on to it in a very small window. Incomplete. But it's incomplete. Eagles are definitely thankful in that play that that ball wasn't intercepted. It could have been, uh, but it wasn't. So now they're going to look for a bit of a three and out, and they're going to punt. The kick for the it's one of those windows where... There's a 60% chance that the ball is going to be caught. It's just a question of which player is going to get to it. And you're hopeful that it's your team and not the other way around. Eagles ready to punt this one away. That'll be John Picaro. He'll stand in his own one-yard line. Clean snap to him. Sends it into the air. Spirals through. It'll bounce at the 50. A running start for the return man for DSU. And he'll be brought down at about the 36-yard line this time around. Keenan Black on the return for the Hornets. Black got tripped up by the legs of his own blocker. Uh, he could have went around and maybe he could have made a, a big play on that. Now he made a late decision, probably had already made a decision in his mind, but he caught the Eagles unaware and not just that, he got a little bit of forward momentum as he brought in that punt as you saw in that replay. Yeah, because most, most of the situations, uh, the person receiving the ball is definitely going to do, do the fair catch, don't want to run the risk of fumbling the ball. So Delaware State will go back under center. Two receivers plus the tailback. And they'll start this drive with Bryant Dallas in the backfield. Dallas receives a handoff, sweeping towards the right side. And he'll be brought down just shy of the original line to gain. Excuse me, the original Dallas, line of scrimmage. He's got to go around the blockers. Uh, couldn't find anywhere to stop them near the sidelines. An loss of one is second and 11. Loss of one Just on under the play. two minutes to go here in this third quarter. Second and 11 from the 39. North Carolina Central trying to finish this job. They're only up by 10. This game's still in the balance. 
Touchdown here from Delaware State. Sets up a barn-burning fourth quarter. As Matteo looks towards his right, they'll change up the play. Now looks like the wide receiver at the top, not quite on the same page, but they'll hand this one off to the tailback. And up across, Dallas gets to the sticks. Dallas Should be enough for the first the down. And they will move him forward. So Bryant Dallas getting the job done for DSU. And we look here. Great block set up there. Carry the ball 11 times for 28 yards in this game, along of 15. The Eagles leading on the ground, 97 yards for North Carolina Central, just 55 for DSU. Another handoff here, and again into open space, into the second level, Bryant Dallas. And he is Dallas, the ball running carrier. almost unopposed right now. Dallas down, using a series of moves to invade tacklers line. over there. That's Where two straight possessions to where he has ran Delaware through the, his blocks and gained a nice chunk of yards on the play. So the Hornets, again, they'll huddle up and spread everybody out. Just under 40 seconds left in the third quarter. Delaware State trying to score before the frame is out. Bethea, another handoff for Dallas. Dallas through the line, but not much there. Dallas, as the Eagles down, quickly down. bring them down. And that could be the last play, but I think Delaware State is going to try to push the envelope for one more here. Could have actually worked if they would have just let the quarterback um, hold on to the football. All the attention was on Dallas. Uh, the quarterback had a nice lane for a good run. Second down, just five seconds left in the half, and Delaware State is going to let the timer expire. And that sends us to the fourth quarter. North Carolina Central leads this game by 10, but Delaware State trying to bring this down to a one-score game. This is MEAC Football on the MEAC Digital Network and on ESPN3. MEAC Football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. Joshua Stephenson and Jonathan Duran here at O'Kelly Reddick Stadium as the Eagles take on the Hornets of Delaware State. It's been a tight game here. Back up and running. Replay system is back up and running. Yeah. Thank you. Referee letting us know that the official replay system is again operable. And clouds starting to roll in. We played most of this game in sunshine, about 75 degrees at kick as they hand this ball off to the tailback. Dallas. The Bryant ball Dallas. He's brought down after a short gain. It's now third down. Don't think it's supposed to rain today, but clouds going overcast nine, and nine. starting to turn a little bit darker here and it's making it a little bit more intense as we make our way towards the end of this game. Oh yeah, the weather does play a factor in it. If it's raining a lot, you may want to stick to the run game and vice versa in any other weather conditions. 23-13, North Carolina Central ahead, but Delaware State trying to make this a one-possession game. It is third and four now. How about the nine-yard line? Bethea looking for the end zone. He's going to roll, trying to take it himself. He's not going to be able to get enough for the first down as North Carolina Central closes the door. Steven Bethea. Stokes with a great open field tackle. On the quarterback. Stokes putting the wood to uh, Bethea right there. Bethea thought he could uh, elude the other couple of tackles uh, to score the, uh, the touchdown, but uh, they stopped him right shot of the goal line. Bethea had a couple line. of options there at the top of the field. Fourth and one. And reading it the entire way, Steven Stokes, he puts the clamps on him and puts him down at the seven yard line and Delaware State now is gonna bring out the kicking unit. I mean, the place kicker, Jose Romo Martinez, a preseason second team all MEAC selection. And he'll kick this one left footed from the left hash. It's on the way, has enough distance and he splits Romo the uprights. Kick is good. And it's now a seven point game. 23-16 is Delaware State. It's now one touchdown away from tying it up. Well, offensively for, for any team, you want to complete every drive at least with something, whether it's a field goal or a safety or a touchdown. You want to not leave empty-handed. Now, last drive for Delaware State. As they put three more points on the board. They go down the field and encompasses two quarters and ends up with about a 15-yard field goal from Romo Martinez. Close to look at the drive brought to you by North Carolina Eye, Ear, Nose, and Throat. Visit them online at nceent.com. So now North Carolina Central will send back Jordan Freeman and Brandon Cotterington to return this kick. 
Another look at the kick there, and sure foot from Jose Romo Martinez showing exactly why he was a preseason all MEAC selection, and he's been one of the top kickers in the league for his entire career. The kick now coming off from Delaware State. It's going to be for Codrington. Runs forward and brings it in at the 8-yard line. Codrington right up the middle and trying to make his way towards the sideline. And he is finally coggered at the 30-yard line. But he had a great head of steam as he started that return. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, Jonathan. Uh, he, if he would have eluded that, that one tackler, on uh, I think we could have been seeing a different conversation right now. He brings it out. So Brandon Codrington will start North Carolina Central at the 31-yard line. As they send the unit out there. And again, it's going to be number 11 for North Carolina Central, Davius Richard. So far in this game, 10 for 19, 174 yards and two touchdowns. On the ground, just four carries for seven yards. He'll start this drive with one tailback and two wide receivers. Handoff here for the tailback, Isaiah Totten. Totten shakes his way past the line and moves up to the 40-yard line, but flags thrown at the tail end of the play. Totten, the ball carrier. And it looks like Flag there's a horning the down and a little bit of pain as well. Holding. Offense, number 84. 10-yard penalty. We play first down. It's a tough break for North Carolina Central. And an injured Hornet will send us to a media timeout as he'll be tended to during the break. This is MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. We'll be back right after this. The world's never gotten enough of it. So we proudly bring you more of it. The new 911. Timeless machine. MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. Alex Lozano, the injured Hornet, helped off the field. Lozano, the junior linebacker from Jersey City, New Jersey. 28 tackles, 19 solos this year as he's been a leader in the middle for Delaware State. As we're getting back to the game now, North Carolina Central will start after losing some yardage. And they'll go back to the read option with Micah Zanders. Delaware State, they saw number eight, and they were quickly into the backfield. Yeah, uh, the Hornets defense said they were right having no Xander. parts of any more uh, QB rushes, long. so they quickly swallowed up Xanders in the backfield. That's Joshua Stephenson. I'm Jonathan Dern here at O'Kelly Riddick Stadium. Another look here as Delaware State just crashed the second edges and, and shut that run down before it even started. It's now second down and 19, and this is really unfortunate for North Carolina Central because that first down play was an eight-yard carry from Isaiah Totten. Now they're facing second and 19 as they bring back Davius Richard. He has three wide receivers at his disposal. So he waits on the snap now, and will look upfield. Richard heaves this one down the sideline. Tried for the one-handed catch, E.J. Hicks, but didn't have enough range. It's third down. Yeah, if only he could uh, extend his arm like Jordan did in Space Jam, he would have been able to get that catch. Uh, but tough break on that play. And Space Jam's a movie. Yeah. It's a cartoon. I, you know what I'm saying? I, I, he probably wish he could do that. And see, that's the thing. Just nobody told Jordan he could do that in cartoon <laughs> land. Third and 19. Unfortunately, this is not cartoon land. Otherwise, it would have been a completed pass. But who knows? Third and 19. Four receivers for Davius Richard. Movement from Delaware State. One person jumped. The offensive lineman moved. And sometimes when that happens, it might go against the defense. I'm sorry. It's Moses Dupree. He jumped. The right tackle moved in response. And that sometimes that's just what you've got to do. When you see moving on the other side, you move, you point to the guy. Say, that's your guy right there. That's your guy. Yeah, well, that quickly turned into, no, I didn't do it. He did it. No, it wasn't me. It was you. Uh, on, that, on, that, on that play. And another look at that pass from Davius Richard just past the outstretched arms of E.J. Hicks. Let's see what he can do here on third down. Richard stepping up, and he's going to run for it now. Moving outside, he'll be brought down in open field at the 30-yard line. Then they're the making that tackle quickly. Charles Peeler made that interception earlier. And right now, he's got to be feeling pretty good, feeling like he's been able to have the number of Davius Richard. Hornets secondary sticking to the receivers like Lou. There's really no... Uh, receiver open. Davis had to use his legs and try to get the best of it. So now fourth down for North Carolina Central. They'll punt. And John Picaro will stand 
at about his own 16-yard line. Since this one airborne. Great kick, a skyrocket all the way back inside the 30-yard line. Keenan Black slips out of the first tackle, has some blockers, stiff arms the next, a flag thrown behind, and more flags as well. Looks like it could be multiple flags going against the return team. A couple of holds as Keenan, Keenan Black, Black, he did a lot of magic in that backfield, but looks like the Hornets are going to lose the yardage either way. Flags on the field. So the flags are thrown, the referees will get together and make their decision here. Today's crew has a referee of Antroy Singleton. He talks to the rest of his crew and and I'll get ready to make the call here. Almost ready. Has his hand on his hip. He'll open up the belt pack. Clipping. Return team number 28. On 15 yard. First down. So a 15 yard penalty for clipping against Delaware State. They'll lose 15 yards. They were just across the 30 yard line. I think they was spotted down at the 31. So the ball will come back to the 16. The the Another look at the return line. here. You see the call for clipping in the backfield. Delaware State. And Delaware State will have a lot of ground to cover here. Just over 12 minutes to go here in regulation. Hornets one touchdown away from tying this game up. It's gone back and forth. North Carolina Central built up a lead. But Delaware State trying to bring it back to even. Play action here for Bethea. Bethea on the out route. What a grab there on the sideline for DSU. Got the foot down. And there, Bazette Woodley again working for the Hornets. Receivers always practice that during practice, knowing how to catch, knowing where your foots are during the sidelines in order to complete that pass. Great, great play on that. Number 88. Pass complete for eight yards. Actually, they'll give him just seven. It's second and three. But Bazette Woodley, he's been working very hard for DSU all game long. Has that touchdown reception. That's his fourth grab of the game. It's over 60 yards. And here's a handoff here for the tailback, Richard Harris. And Harris was dragging defenders Richard with him. Harris. And if he would have been able to shed that tackler, he was off to the races. Air showcasing his movement truck abilities, pushing all the other defenders out of his way in order to gain those extra yards. Now the look here, you see Harris going right up the middle. North Carolina Central getting that tackle in there. Chuck Manning making the hit. First and ten for the Hornets at the 32-yard line in their own territory. I'll hand this one off on the dive up the middle. Harris again. Another shoestring tackle. Connor makes the stop. It's now second and short. Delaware State, they just seem to have found their recipe. Just keep the ball going on the ground. Short gains are good gains. Harris running like a prototypical power back. Usually when defenders collapse on them, they have a tendency to fall forward. Uh, that's a good thing to practice. You always want to get those extra yards whenever you can. Second down and about four. For DSU. Spread out and two backs. They'll motion one back. That's Bryant Dallas. And now they'll pass up the middle, and that's going to be complete to the sticks. Pass complete to number 21, Jordan Hanna. And that's enough for the first down. Out to the 42 yard line. And it's now first and 10 for DSU at the 42. Another look there for. We have a they right underneath the arm stretch of the defense floats right underneath it. Still converts. So first and ten for DSU. A very calm but steady drive for the Hornets. Bethea waits on the next snap. He'll hand it off here. Harris cut down in the backfield, but flags thrown. Harris the ball. Trying to see who was there for the hit. Looked like it was Chuck flags Manning. Again, Miles Terman also hyped up. And a flag thrown, and our referee, Antroy Singleton, getting ready to make the call after they get everything sorted out. And it's going to go against Delaware State. For Delaware State, that is their fifth penalty in this game for 46 yards. North Carolina Central, four penalties for 30 yards. You look at that hold right there on that near side. And Delaware State is going to lose those 10 yards. 
will be first and 20. So now first and 20, the same issue that North Carolina Central faced on their last drive. They had that great play on first down and ended up losing the yardage and ended up punting. And now it becomes first and 20 for DSU. Nice crowd on hand as North Carolina Central back at home after the bye week. The Eagles bring in the blitz, and here's a pass, a rainbow towards the sideline, but too far ahead, trying to split in between the two wide receivers, looking for both Bazette Woodley and Trey Gross, but, but too far ahead of both. Oh, but they playing a the game of jackpot, just tossing it over over the secondary, well, trying to see if one of his receivers can make a play on it. Uh, that time nobody uh, was even near the football. Second down and 20 now for DSU. Great crowd has been on hand all day today. It's been nice for North Carolina Central to get back home. They started the season playing six of their first eight games on the road. They played their first three games away from home as well. As Bethea looks over the middle, that pass is complete. And the receiver will stretch it forward to get it across the original line of scrimmage. Bazette Woodley. And it's now third and nine for DSU after the 11-yard catch. He moves the ball out. Take a look back here on this play. Receiver catches it, but almost drops it, but still maintains Will focus to hold on to as much as he can to get that reception. And, and Bazette Woodley, he's been the go-to guy for Delaware State. That is his fifth catch today. He's up to over 70 yards receiving, plus the touchdown. Third down for the Hornets, eight yards to go. The Eagles look ready to bring pressure again. They're going to bring the house, and Bethea is going to be stapled to the backfield. The Eagles gamble, and it pays Bethea. off with the zero blitz. Bethea, that's his third time being sacked. Uh, has been seeing a swarm of defenders all over him this, this whole game. Uh, so unfortunately, the Hornets got a sack on that play. And a penalty is going to be declined here for North Carolina Central. It's like it might be a hold. And North Carolina Central, the mission, third down, and they bring everything out here. They absolutely overwhelm the line. Deontay Fair in there first, and then Darius Royster in there, and Deshaun Holloway is absolutely crushing the quarterback to finish the play. Yeah, and they and they simply just did their job and. Uh, eluding tackles and swarming the quarterback in the pocket. Uh, Eagles defensive front line doing their job today. And it's Brandon Cotterington's turn again trying to work some magic as he waits on this punt from Jose Romo Martinez. Snap is clean to him. Left-footed punt goes high into the air. Cotterington is going to look at it. He'll take a chance and he'll be very quickly brought down. On the reception. Tackle there made by Tyshen Williams and sends us to a media timeout and he is hyped up. Special teams, your job is to go out there and make a hit and boy, did he make a hit. Well, the Eagles came out lucky on that end. 23-16 is the score. You're listening to... The world's never gotten enough of it. So, we proudly bring you more of it. The new 9-11 timeless machine. Miak football on the Miak Digital Network and ESPN3. Jonathan Duran and Joshua Stephenson here at O'Kelly Riddick Stadium. We're in the fourth quarter between North Carolina Central and Delaware State. It's almost homecoming season and for Delaware State, their head coach Ron Milstead, it's a homecoming for him. He coached the offensive line here at North Carolina Central back in 2013. You see him on the screen right now. He's trying to make it a happy homecoming and Head coach Trey Oliver, he started his coaching career at Delaware State as he looks at this Eagle team on the field as Jordan Freeman skips his way outside to the top of the sideline. And it's going to be second Freeman down after a carry of about four. But Coach Oliver, he started his coaching career at Delaware State, coaching Pick defensive backs, more. and he was the assistant second special teams eight. coordinator as well. And he's trying Both to get a nice line. win against Delaware State as well. But it's always interesting to see how paths get intertwined between coaches they talk about a coaching tree and a coaching family and we're seeing it on display today well it's the thing is like you never know where you know where you might have to go back to your hometown uh, so it's always cool to see those teams are intertwined with one another Eagles go on the pitch play and Jordan Freeman 
Is able to break his way outside. He'll get enough for the first the down. Area. But if he would have been able to hurdle that tackler, he could have been more. Playing play a little game with tippy toes to try to keep his balance up. But uh, unfortunately, the, the would-be tackler uh, wrapped him up. And a correction, not enough for the first down. It's third down now. And it's third and short. So the Eagles will spread out three receivers. Ten seconds to snap it. Richard hands it off to Freeman. Freeman around the corner. Has enough for the first down up to the 40-yard line as he bulldozes his way forward. And the Eagles get a fresh 10 yards. And this is where the game management comes into play. Knowing when to make the right audibles and right reads in order to keep the drive going. So another first down for North Carolina Central. They keep going forward. And the Eagles are going to slow things down as Davius Richard looks to the sideline. And the Eagles now split out. They'll go to a tight shotgun formation. A motion to tie it in. And now again back to the pitch. It's Mookie Collier this time around. Collier through the tunnel of blockers. And he's up to the 48-yard line. A great carry and a great blocking scheme that time around. And more extracurriculars on the sideline. It's been a little bit of a chippy Collier. game between the two. The uh, it seems to be some excitement. Uh, Collier's teammate um, stepping up for him. I guess the Hornets eight there eight almost got a penalty for you. Eight, second and two. So second down and two. We've already had one unsportsmanlike conduct penalty in this game. Assessed to both sides, actually. And second down and two. The Eagles run the pitch in the opposite direction. Collier trying to turn the corner. He gets back to the line, and he won't get much further. It's going to be third down. Collier sw swallowed by a sea of red helmets on there in that play. Was not having it on Collier defensively. On the carry. So it's going to be third Pick and one for North Carolina Central. Third and one from the 49-yard line. Time almost out here. Just under five minutes to go in North Carolina Central. you got to think if they're going to be able to pick up a first down here, they might be able to try to bring this game to its conclusion. They're up by one touchdown. they got to make sure to hold on to the ball. Third and one. Handoff here for the tailback, and he's going to be cut down in the backfield. He might have lost the football. A lot of the Hornets are pointing in their direction. Let's wait on the officials to make the call. And Delaware State looks amped up, and the Hornets have the football, and they have a chance to tie this game up with under five minutes to go. And this is a very big deal. Four minutes may seem little to some, but in a football game, four minutes is an eternity. They still have enough time to turn things back around on their favor. Now the look at Collier. He's brought down, and they're going to bring this play under further review and try to figure out if this ball belongs to North Carolina Central or to Delaware State. If the Hornets get this ball, that's a big opportunity for them. North Carolina Central and Delaware State battling here. 23-16 to is our score. North Carolina Central is 1-2. In league play, Delaware State is 0-4. North Carolina Central one game behind because of the bye week. We'll check in on the scoreboard. At the half, Florida A&M leads Morgan State 24-10. And North Carolina A&T, happy homecoming for them. 64-6 over the Bison of Howard. And Bethune-Cookman just finished off their drive to tie this game up with South Carolina State. Their extra point pending at 7-6. Wildcats getting ready to kick the extra point 11 minutes to go in the second quarter. But this is the time of year when the standings really start to come into fruition. Yeah, absolutely. For Central, you want to be able to take advantage, of, like I said, of these teams that are starting to fall off, and that is a capitalization for your team as well. It's North Carolina Central right now. It looks like they're going to have to go out to defend if Delaware State does indeed have control of this football. So the ruling on the field confirmed a fumble recovered by the defense. And now Delaware State, a touchdown, makes this a brand new ball game. Well, I, I would thought on that drive that they would switch it up. Three consecutive plays were just straight run plays. I figured that they would try to switch it up with a little bit of play action, but they didn't. 4.24 to go in regulation. Another look at the fumble there from Collier. But now Delaware State starts their drive. A handoff for the tailback. 
Bryant Dallas up the middle, all the way up to the 35-yard line. A quick 13 yards on their first play from scrimmage. Bryant Dallas, Dallas the setting the, the tempo for, for this drive Take for the Hornets. Second down, Delaware State looking to go quickly. They spread everybody out. Bryant Dallas in the backfield still on the right side now of Bethea. Bethea to pass, looking down the sideline, a leaping grab. Did he stay in bounds? They're going to give him a catch all the way inside the red zone to the 16. An amazing catch. Went a little bit slow-mo. It seems like everything sped down whenever he made that turnaround catch. And Bazette Woodley showing off his skills again. Look at that. Two toes down. Another snap. A handoff now for Bryant Dallas. Dallas a stutter step in the backfield. Crashes through the line. Now second down at Delaware State. Looking ready to tie this game up. And they are marching towards the goal line. The Hornets have all the momentum on their side on this drive. And the Eagle crowd here trying to push this defense, will them forward. Three and a half minutes to go. Second down and six. A handoff now for Dallas. Dallas has room. He's to the goal line just shy. It's first and goal for DSU. Marching to the goal line. Dallas on the play. Trying to give the Hornets some life back into this game. They're going to put the quarterback under center, Tyreek Bethea. Bethea takes the snap. He's going to try to push the pile. Is he going to be able to reach over the top? And the referees are going to move in and sort the pile, but a flag was thrown at the goal line. And if Delaware State doesn't get set in an illegal formation, that might push them backward. Flag on play. We'll see what the officials have to say. The referees looking, trying to get but the call will be Antroy Singleton addresses the press box and gets ready to make the call. So offside on the defense moves them closer, and now it's just going to take one big push, and Delaware State's going to bring in the heavy package. They're going to go action into the wing formation here as Bethea tries to turn. He rolls over. They're going to stop him at the one-yard line. Forward progress stopped. It's now second down. Now sort everybody out again. A few players slow to get up. A lot of pushing and shoving happening now as this is just turned down to an old-fashioned tug of war. Yeah, the Eagles not giving an inch even on the goal line. Look for the Hornets to move all their linemen up front in order to get some daylight before the backfield. Second and goal, but before that, a timeout will be taken by Coach Oliver in North Carolina Central. Sends it to a media timeout. 2.28 to go here in regulation, and you're not going to want to miss the finish of this one. You're watching MEAC Football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. world's never gotten enough of it. So, we proudly bring you more of it. The new 911. Timeless machine. MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. Delaware State knocking on the door. It's second down and a goal. 23-16. Eagles ahead. Delaware State they stand one yard away from tying this game. Tyreek Bethea takes the snap. He's going to try to push it in. He's trying to roll over the line, and they will stop his progress short again. And it's going to be third and goal from the goal line. See, this is the type of moment that you look for, the goal line stance. They happen rarely when they happen. Like I said, it's a big morale boost for the defense. You can see they're trying to get the Eagle fans. Bethea just got caught in the washing machine there. Alongside myself, that's Joshua Stevenson. I'm Jonathan Duran. Delaware State has tried three times with the quarterback sneak. Tyreek Bethea still under center. Takes a snap, turns and hands off to the tailback. And he's not going to be getting to the line of scrimmage. He's going to be driven backwards. He'll lose a yard. It's now fourth and goal from the two. He goes setting up the blockade on the goal line. Hornets offense looks very frustrated as to why he didn't get the blocking he needed to make that touchdown. And Bryant Dallas brought down after an open field tackle for North Carolina Central making the play Manny Smith 
is fourth down in the game. Coming up now from the three yard line. Eagles, Eagles defense is completely juiced up and they're ready to make this final stand on the goal line. And Delaware State, they're gonna take the time down. And if they convert, North Carolina Central will have as little time as possible. But they have to convert. They'll burn the timeout now. A 30 second timeout taken by DSU. Fourth and two with 55 seconds. They've tried three times on the quarterback sneak, and the Eagles stopped him all three times. And they turn around, they go to Bryant Dallas, and Matty Smith says, not today. In these moments of the game, this is where the time clock can be on your side or against you. If you score too fast and give the other team the ball with full of playmakers, you don't want to do that. You want to give them as least time as possible. So let's we'll see what these two teams are setting up for the rest of the game. It's fourth down, two yards to gain, and this is going to decide the game. Who's going to get the bigger push up front? And of course, the extra point is going to be the important thing, as North Carolina Central missed one earlier today. And you got to think, if the Eagles would have made that extra point, even if Delaware State scored, they'd have to get the two-point conversion. Now a touchdown and an extra point ties this game. Well, teams are Always spend a little bit of time on extra practice on working on that two-minute drill. How to advance the ball down the field in the least amount of time. The sideline and every down ball can be your friend. Here's a snap for Pathea. And before that, timeout taken by Delaware State. And that should be their final timeout. Second timeout. Excuse me, their second. 30-second timeout. And a 30-second timeout for DSU. Pathea was ready and they called the timeout. It looked like he was going to roll out and he would have had the option to throw or pass usually when you have that boot you have the flow you can see everything in front of you so now they'll call up something else dial up something new from coach Milstead. And he's burning through those timeouts really fast uh, you never know when you're gonna need him so hopefully he doesn't have to make another uh, timeout decision uh, it's a 55 second ball game you don't use them now you're probably not using them Unless you go to overtime, and if you do go to overtime, you get a couple of fresh ones. So North Carolina Central, their defense back out there. It is fourth and two from Delaware State. And they're going to go out of the I form and go into the shotgun set. Bethea pulls the ball game in his hands, goes on the fade route. That pass is caught. Touchdown, Delaware State, and they are an extra point away from tying it up. But they throwing the ball up in the air, giving his receivers a chance and over to cough it down. Big, big play. Big, a, huge reception on and the And a flag thrown during the pass, and it could be offensive pass interference by the way that Delaware State is reacting. Here's the call. After the play, after the play, a sportsmanlike conduct. So they do get the touchdown, but unsportsmanlike conduct. They'll be unforced on the kickoff. So, wow. Delaware State, they go down in the clutch. Fourth and two. Tyleek Bethea leaping grab by Bazette Woodley, his third touchdown today. And, uh, and uh, one thing that, that Woodley's going to learn is you're going to want to act like you've been there before in terms of your touchdown etiquette cost them an extra point and an illegal substitution by North Carolina Central after the play as well and a correction Woodley that's the second touchdown today but he has been absolutely incredible for this Hornet team seven catches for 99 yards and two scores including one that brings the Hornets to the brink of tying this game up Snap and a hold. The kick on the extra point to tie the game. And we're level at 23 with just 50 seconds to go in regulation. These are what you call a nail biter moments. 23, tied the game is 23 with 50 seconds left to go. Look, let's see what team will impose their will and try to come out top before we go to OT. North Carolina Central led this game by 10, but now 10 
unanswered points by Delaware State ties this game up. That last drive, it goes eight plays. 48 yards, three minutes and 34 seconds. The scoring play on fourth down. Tyleek Bethea to Bazetta Woodley for two yards. A scoring drive brought to you by North Carolina Eye, Ear, Nose, and Throat. Visit them online at nceent.com. Well, there's 50 seconds left in regulation. The Eagles can still walk off winners. Yeah, you can, but you have to utilize the sideline and timeouts are your friend. You always want to make sure you get the ball out of bounds in order to stop the clock. And you also have to factor in Woodley. He makes the touchdown grab. He spikes the ball, and that costs Delaware State 15 yards, and they'll kick off from their own 20-yard line. It's huge, too, as well. So now Cotterington and Freeman back to return for North Carolina Central and off to send it off for Delaware State will be number 45, Jake Bridal. And here's the kick. Kicks it as deep as he can. This one's going to be for Cotterington from the 25-yard line. Cotterington up the middle, has some room. He hits on his own blocker, but it's to the sideline. 40, 30, cuts inside, 20, 15, 10, 5. And it's down, North Carolina Central. From one end to the other, North Carolina Central ahead by 6, 29, 23. Oh, my God, an amazing finish off of the kick return with a burst of speed, sheds all the blockers, and heads for a touchdown. An amazing momentum swing for the Eagles. Brandon Cotterington hits the home run, and North Carolina Central leads this game 29-23 with 38 seconds remaining. Ran into one of his own blockers, but still had the presence of mind to keep going. A series of moves that invade the last lone defender, and he scores for a touchdown. And Cotterington into the end zone as far as you have to legally go, and immediately a U-turn to celebrate on the sideline. Olivo. North Carolina Central to kick the extra point. The snap and hold are on the way, but flags before the snap. Movement, and it's a false start against North Carolina Central. So the false start will move North Carolina Central back. And they'll get ready once again to kick. But what a turn of events. Delaware State on fourth and two. They convert to score the touchdown, a 15-yard Penalty for spiking the ball from Bazetta Woodley turns into a 70-yard kick return from Brandon Cotterington that flips this game on its head. The Hornets score on the last drive. Kind of sucked the momentum out of the crowd. Eagles come right back with their own touchdown to swing the momentum back in their favor. The extra point is good, but flags thrown once again. Flag on the field. And they've been having some issues just getting started on this extra point. False start from North Carolina Central, but this time it looks like it'll be against Delaware State as both teams are leaving the field. So the extra point is good. The return from Brandon Cotterington, 75 yards to the house. Closer look at that. Brought to you by North Carolina Eye, Ear, Nose, and Throat as he pinballs off of his own blocker, realizes he has one man to beat. He uses mo his momentum against him and takes it in and takes the Eagles ahead with just 38 seconds remaining. A miraculous finish for the, for the Eagles special team. Look at how excited they are, man. They're happy for the guy. And now North Carolina Central ready to kick it away. It'll be Adrian Olivo. And they're going to have to make sure that Karan Lane doesn't do the same thing. He almost broke one earlier today. Brandon Cotterington brought him down. Well, I guess the only solution to that was just to kick the ball out of bounds. Don't want to put it in the hands of a good playmaker. Olivo onside is brought in by Delaware State at the 48-yard line. And the Eagles try to go for the onside for the recovery, but now Delaware State has the football with 37 seconds to go, and they only have 52 yards to get to the end zone to tie it again. A uh, huge task for the Hornets offense. You, you know, literally less than a minute to get the job done. They're going to have to make huge plays offensively on the sidelines in order to stop the clock in order to get that touchdown before time expires. Usually when you get those onside, the ball will take a sharp bounce into the air, and it never took off. 
So now Delaware State, they have one timeout remaining with 37 seconds remaining go. in regulation. It'll be Tyleek Bethea leading the way for the Hornets. Here's a snap to start the drive. Bethea pass is complete, no incomplete to Karana Lane. Bounces in at the 40-yard line, and it'll lose six seconds there at second down. Well, traditionally in, on every play in the game of football, you have seven seconds to make a decision. Uh, Hornets have a little bit more time left, but they wish they could take that play back. Another look at that last throw from Bethea. Left it just a little bit short for a lane. Four receiver spread for the Hornets. Bethea looking upfield. Throws on the crossing route, incomplete. On sportsmanlike conduct after the play was done. So the Eagles, they make the stop. But then Brian Mills tacks on a suplex at the end, and that's free 15 yards for the Hornets. Brian Mills over there showcasing his suplex skills, looking to try for the WWE on that one. Not sportsmanlike conduct. That'll be a tough break. So the Hornets get some free yardage. They're up to the 38-yard line. Oh. Man. Tried his best Brock Lesnar right there oh, yeah, at five. Uh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, he's still back, right? Lesnar, of course, took his turn in the NFL. And now here's Talik Bethea looking to pass. Has a man to the corner. That pass is incomplete. At the five-yard line, he was looking for the receiver, Corona Lane. It's now second water. down. Incomplete. If he hits a lane. Delaware State again setting up a grandstand finish. He didn't miss him by much as you look at this replay. Right there. Almost had him. Almost like a feeling almost uh, spilling a glass of water. Just a sensational, oh man, almost, almost had something right there. For North Carolina Central, they're glad it didn't spill. Second down. Bethea looking down the out route. That pass is caught by... Quana Kali, he steps out of bounds and they'll stop the clock at the 28 yard line. To Kali. And that's Fourth enough for the first down, down, it looks like. At the 29. Is it third line. down or is it first down? The sticks have moved. And they're going to sort this out. And I think they will call an official's timeout. Is it a first down or is it third down? That's going to be. A big situation here with 16 seconds to go. Officials timeout as North Carolina Central will huddle up. And the referees are still working with the chains on the opposite side of the field. It's going to be third and short for Delaware State rather than first down with 16 seconds to go. The ball spotted at the 29-yard line. And that's all that's left for the Hornets to try to send this game to an extra period. Here's another look at this return from Brandon Cotterington that right now is the game winner for North Carolina Central. He ran into his own blocker, but it still didn't stop him. Absolutely. Still had a presence in the mind to keep the ball moving and to score a touchdown, which was big for his team. Third and two, 16 seconds to go. It's a handoff now for the tailback. He'll get enough for the first down, and Delaware State are going to try to spike this ball. 11 seconds, and they stop the clock to to spot the ball. ball is advanced to the 25 the ball is spotted, 10 seconds Brandon rolling now. But they him, checks to make sure everybody's Delaware set. State. And he's going to waste four seconds, and now there's six seconds left in the game. And Bethea, that's one of those situations where you just got to know that everybody's set. You have to trust that everybody's where they need to be. You go to the line, you spike it, but he checked behind him, and that cost Delaware State some precious seconds. And now some precious seconds that they wish that they could have back. Now they essentially have time for one more play in order to score. Six seconds left in regulation. Delaware State needs to get to the end zone to tie it. But they are looking for the end zone. That pass is intercepted, and that will take this game to its conclusion. On the return for North Carolina Central, Brian Mills, he's across the 50. He's going to try to take it and finally usher it out of bounds. That's the end of the game as Brian Mills sends North Carolina Central into raptures. 
He calls the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, but takes it upon himself to end the game. North Carolina Central walks the tightrope, and they pick up a 30-23 win over Delaware State. Eagles now 3-4, and 2-2 two and two in league play. The Hornets 1-7 and seven and are 0-5 and in MEAC play. You got to catch a great contest here on the MEAC Digital Network. For those of you joining us locally, well, after this timeout, we'll have our Eagles postgame show presented by Right Time Realty and Kimberly Williams. 30 to 23, your final score. You heard it all right here on the MEAC Digital Network. So for Joshua Stephenson, I'm Jonathan Duran saying so long from the Bull City in O'Kelly Reddick Stadium, where your final score is North Carolina Central 30, Delaware State 23. All games are airing on the ESPN networks and is streamed live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.